Hello and welcome to the Easy Allies podcast. I'll be your moderator, Brandon Jones. Joining me this week, panelists Ian Hink. Hi. Ben Moore. Roll and roll and what? And our very own Persona 5 Strikers NPC slash co-moderator, Daniel Bloodworth. <laughs> Hello. Zenkichi. Yeah. Distinguished guests. You look a lot like him. You do. We are here to talk about some of the biggest headlines in the world of video games. But before we do that, we must first answer for all of the mistakes we made last week. Bloodworth, begin corrections music, please. Boop. Assassin's Creed 3 was the sequel to Revelations, not Assassin's Creed 2. I said 3 sold well because 2 did well. Revelations, yeah. I guess, did well as well. Rap, it, it's funny because it's series. like, you know, like we had that theory about Assassin's Creed, but now that like when I think about it, it's like, well, 3 at this point was probably because it was a number and it hadn't been a number for a while. Sure. Because <laughs> it was a number. There is an Animal Crossing anime movie. <laughs> it's called Dabutsu, right. Dabutsu no Mori. Um, well, yeah, that's just the Japanese name of Animal Crossing. Oh, yeah. I wonder what that is, Daboot. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> you're on fire yeah, with these today. Ben came to play. Uh, Acquire isn't uh, developing Project Triangle strategy. Art Dink is the dev behind the game. They just uh, received the Octopath engine. Um, mm. The game is still being produced by Team Asano, which oversaw Octopath Traveler and Bravely Default. End corrections music, please. Do. Let's start this on the right note. With some good news, something in video games that we can be proud of. A silver lining for this last week. This one's for you, Ben. From Ian. For me? Uh, for you. you from Ian. Ian. Not that Ian. A different Whoa, Ian. Whoa, Ian. Thanks. Yeah. It was Ally Ian. That. It was patron Ian. Guilty Gear Strive had a public beta this last weekend, and it was roundly praised for its excellent netcode, enabling yeah, nearly flawless worldline online play. Online functionality in fighting games has been a significant issue recently, especially during the pandemic, where local offline meetups and tournaments are out of the question, primarily due to many games using delay-based netcode, which doesn't scale well over large audiences or slower networks. This is an issue for any online game, but the precise high-speed nature of fighting games means that they suffer the most from poor online. Guilty Gear is using rollback netcode, which you've heard a little bit of on this podcast, which is more complicated but produces a significantly improved experience even for players across the globe. This is excellent news for all fighting game fans as the glowing praise for Arc System Works has the potential to push other major developers to further develop rollback designs for their online modes. Do, do you see that Smash potential? Smash is not going to do it. Yeah, do you see? <laughs> They're not going to do it. It just is one. All I need is one. Will one person change their mind? <laughs> uh, no, it, it really deserves all the praise. Uh, I, outside of matches where like something was up with my PS5 and it said my Ethernet cable is not connected, I don't think I had a single like laggy match with anybody. Wow. Like every it it felt nice, fantastic. Yeah, it's it was wonderful. Feels good. Feels good. Roll back. Rolling what? <laughs> Did you get your PS5 back? You have I have a new... Now, right? Yeah, they sent me a different PS5. Wow. Mail yeah. back. Did I say PS5? <laughs> and so far, outside of that Ethernet thing, which I need to figure out, it mm. it has been uh, fine. Whew. Okay, then. Yeah. So Guilty Gear Strive performed better than your PlayStation 5. <gasps> um, <laughs> sure. Sure. But yes, Guilty Gear Strive is hype as fuck. That's my official quote. Today was a state of play, and it was just okay. What? <laughs> it's all right. We had some exciting stuff at the end of it, um, but we also had... It was tough. It's tough going into a state of play because we've had some pleasant state of plays, stuff that was just like kind of a normal Nintendo Direct level, and then we've had some state of plays that absolutely melted our faces off. So it's tough to know what anticipation, what type of anticipation to have, especially after holiday season, especially in February. What do we bring into a state of play? We, we asked the question of how many state of plays we were maybe going to get before we got to this summer. But, um, uh, Ben, you seemed pleased. Why were you pleased in the state of play? What did they announce for you that you got excited about? Might be I the like first Yuffie thing I to talk a about. whole lot. Um, and she just looks wonderful. The fact that there, we're getting new story for the Final Fantasy VII remake in a couple of months is just extremely exciting. The fact that it's on PS5 with a bunch of updates, gives you like a great excuse to replay it. Uh, she looks super fun to play, and we already know that their interpretations of characters in this new battle system is super, super fun. So that's promising. 
Uh, also, shout out to Returnal. That game yeah. looks dope. Yeah. Um, both, I think, just atmospherically and the type of gameplay that they're doing, I think, looks very frenetic and fun. Were you expecting this level of... You expecting new characters in a Final Fantasy VII Remake DLC? Where, where were your expectations at with uh, anything that they might potentially bring to that game? Well, Final Fantasy VII Remake is hard to gauge <laughs> as is just because it's like... I, I remember that PS3 tech demo and then the entire internet talking about Final Fantasy and pining for Final Fantasy VII Remake for ever after that and so it's just <laughs> it, it's I, I feel like my expectations are distorted I th the fact that we got part one is still kind of mind-blowing to me um so I I was like yeah whenever they have part two or whatever I wasn't even thinking about DLC yeah, um, yeah me neither. especially with Final Fantasy yeah, my, 16 my expectations Horizon. were uh we are going to get a higher resolution and higher frame rate yeah right yeah and that's it yeah, yeah. and yeah. no no additional content but that's kind of their thing with this remake is just doing little surprising weird things and this is pretty great yeah it's it's unclear and I don't know if we have more information on this but the the, the kind of bummer about this is that it, the way they worded the Yuffie thing, it's like the the update to PS5 is free if you have the PS4 version, but then Yuffie costs money and maybe is only on PS5? No, it's de they've come out and said it is only on PS5. Okay, wow. Yeah. I didn't know that had been confirmed. That's kind of yeah. wild that, that that's the case. I hope I hope that PS5s become more abundant by right. That's, whenever that was, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, that's the real bummer is... Like, there's going to be so many people that can only play it on PS4, uh, and you just, you can't easily get a PS5 right now. So, yeah, that's, yeah. that is unfortunate. This is definitely a must-be-nice situation for us, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I think in a way, um, you know, with the new name, right, Final Fantasy VII Remake Intergrade. Intergrade, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like, it's sort of like a lesser way of doing like the persona 5 royal or resident evil directors cut kind of a thing right it's uh, so i think that's maybe how they're they're treating it. it's like well, we're adding on this thing to the game um but yeah but it's weird because as you pay for it extra like yeah i'm curious what that's going to be like for somebody that just buys integrade so you buy right. integrade and then you have to buy yuffie well i wonder like yeah. if you get if you're if it's a fresh purchase maybe you get it the thing that i was thinking about too is and i mean this would make more or less sense depending on how long it takes them to make part two but i had always assumed that final fantasy 7 remake part two or whatever would be cross-gen like would also come out mm. on the ps4 and stuff now i'm thinking maybe this is this was it maybe this was right. the the generation swap and we're just moving forward full steam on a new gen and that's kind of wild if that's the case it's not what i expected i thought they would try to milk both systems for as long as they could well even in the even in today's state of play i feel like you saw like ps4 and ps5 and i i definitely feel like we're still in that point where yeah. th things are coming out for both um so, right. Yeah. Well, I'm still getting a lot of games where they're like, you know, I'll request the PS5 version. It's like, well, there's not a PS5 version, but the PS4 will play on PS5. You know, right. it's like that, right. that kind of line, and like just or trying like to sort if, through that. If Part Two comes out in like end of this year, early 2022, it it'll seem weird if it doesn't also come out for PS4. If it comes out end of 2022, beginning of 2023, maybe that'll feel like less necessary by then who knows like yeah i yeah i kind of got that vibe because i'm surprised i think it's fun to, to throw in new characters we've seen some characters having perspective on things that we weren't introduced to at that time in final fantasy 7 i know this because i've played that part of final fantasy 7 now um but the I wouldn't necessarily say pessimist. I guess the realist is like, the, you know, they, they have really grand aspirations for not only you know, the gameplay, the world, graphics, and the story specifically of how they want to revisit Final Fantasy VII. So they realize in development, okay, we can't do this all at once. We got to do this, you know, segment. And we're like, well, that's going to be, 
you know, question mark quality. And then, well, oh my God, this game's incredible. This totally stands alone as its own thing. I put 60, 70 hours into this game, potentially. And this kind of makes sense because it's like, well, now we're moving on to part two. Now we're going to be adding these new characters. Hey, let's get Yuffie done. <laughs> And then, right. ta-da, you know, DLC. Uh, I wonder I wonder if that's the schedule or if this is really specifically a story that they want to, want to tell. And as such, leading into what you were saying, Ian, if, you know, there are no plans for the PS4 version of this because there are no plans for these character models that they're building, these new areas potentially that we're going to see right. in part two. Well, it seems to me that this is a... Um, Gaiden, is that side story? Like... Mm-hmm. It uh, my memory of OG Seven is a little foggy since it's been a hot minute, but um, Yuffie I think was introduced later. I don't think we saw her in Midgar no. in no, the OG game at it. all. No. No, no, no. So like this is a hot new hot new side story, which is really exciting. And then that I mean that implies that she'll obviously still be around, and we'll see them meet up as they used to, or somehow like it. Yeah, what's what's kind of exciting about Final Fantasy VII Remake is they the way that they have set it up without going into too much detail is they can do whatever they want. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so I, I feel like they can really... They can call back, but they don't have to be like strictly adherent to uh, what what happened in Final Fantasy VII, as, as is clear from what they showed today. Um. The one thing I was thinking about, because, you know, we're thinking about, like, with this happening, you know, that opens up the potential of other characters and stuff. Um, But one thing I would kind of like to see, and I don't know if it would make any sense in the story timeline of part one, uh, but I would like to see them actually turn Red 13 into a playable character. That's, like, one of my few disappointments. That's what I was going to say, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It would be amazing. And Red 13 is, like, off doing stuff sometimes. Like, it's perfect for this kind of a story. Like, you know, what's Red doing before they get to him? What's he doing during parts when he's, like, gone? Yeah, it would be it would be so cool. Yeah, maybe see the story <laughs> of how he got captured. Yeah. Uh, if there's any way we can just get more Cosmo Canyon music, because that song <laughs> bops. <laughs> Do you think the surprises in the story Ben from remake are going to kind of trip people up in terms of their expectations of this like can this just be kind of fun and whimsical or does this also need to be surprising in in how everything ties in or the retelling of it specifically I mean (laughs) Pandora's box is open yeah Uh, seven remake went pretty hard uh, in that regard so in terms of, of of expectation like as far as the tone of this, I mean, I I don't know. I it's hard for me to say. I I think it'll be a mix of both because if you think about Final Fantasy VII Remake, it had some pretty crazy mind bending stuff, but there was plenty of room for levity. You know, you think of the Honey Bee Inn and stuff, and oh, yeah. that's that's really something like Final Fantasy VII has always been good at. And so, yeah, I think it'll be light hearted. I mean, she's running around in a, in a Moogle cloak, for goodness sake. Yeah. Hey, but look, a Moogle. Well, this, do I, do this I takes think, place, do I think this they takes, won't have batshit insane story stuff? No, they totally will. And this takes place before stuff kind of pops off real crazy. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of before some of the big gnarly can't go back from here stuff happens. So I think it because of that could be a little lighter, too. And I hope I can Anything just hop into it. Happen. I hope I can just yeah, jump in there and check that mode out. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I want to. I want to install this on my PS5. Mm-hmm. Transfer my save over. Just play the Yuffie stuff. I would Dude, do that as no, well. you gotta. You gotta get all that lore. You gotta refresh yourself. <laughs> I just want to see smoke, the door bro. and play Yuffie. That smoke. Yeah. Well, considering I just finished it, I'm totally fine with just picking up Yuffie at this point. <laughs> the photo mode. Fine. I'll I, w- be I will run corner. around a little bit for sure. Photo mode. Who told me Kana? Who is that? Kena. Was that you, Kena. Blend? Did you say Kana? Somebody corrected I don't remember who me that on came Kena. From. That came from somebody, a correction somewhere. But. Somebody corrected me. It's Kena, man. According it's to... Kena. I always thought it was Kena. Yeah. Yeah. But it's well, Kena. Well, my first... If it's not, now we can blame State of Play, gal. But uh, we got another glance at Bridge of Spirits. Saw some more pretty forests. Uh, still mm-hmm. seems incredibly visually impressive. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we're getting that August 24th. Um... 
did that change in anyone's eyes? Was that just like, yay? Or was there anything, any new developments? it gets darker at some points than you might have expected. Um, <laughs> but it's, I, I think we already had a little bit of hint of that. But yeah, it's it's got this weird, almost weird vibe of very cute, cuddly critters, and then like, holy crap, this monster or this area or whatever. Um, or like the reveal at the end of this trailer where it's like, oh yo, that big monster used to be an old lady. Like <laughs> yeah. she got obs- consumed by evil plants or something. Yeah, it looks pretty wild. The final like move from that boss that just spits her corpse out at you. You're like, no, I'm trying to sit. Oh, <laughs> She's dead. Yeah. Not- oh my gosh. <laughs> not where I saw that going. We don't see the end of that fight, so who knows? You know, we we'll don't. have to wait. Well, it's winter log is 24. Let's see if that old lady makes it out of it. I, I really hope because I feel like I don't want this to sound like mean or something, but like there, there, there's a class of of game that makes good trailers, looks visually really cool, and then when you get it like the frame rate is terrible or the gameplay is boring or it's an hour and a half long even though what you thought it was was 10 hours or something you know mm. i'm hoping that kina isn't one or more of those kinds of disappointments like i really hope that it lives up and that they've been working on it longer than i think or i don't know i i i really hope this game is good because it just looks so beautiful and those little p- soot monster guys are puffed puffball guys are just so cute <laughs> damn i think they did a good so, job yeah. of gameplay variety this time around it's just a, a little bit more yeah. platforming like you're saying more with what seem like fairly intense boss fights and and some some interesting combat so um i think that was just kind of a darling it was like a hard game to be disappointed with and while like i'm like there's lots of trees It'd be nice to you know change up the environment look kind of a little, little claustrophobic some of the environments It'd be nice to to mm-hmm. open them up a little bit but that game's I, super awesome. We got a date too. I think something that the state of play really did for me is you know, after finishing the Demon Souls remake and Miles Morales, it's kind of like okay, there's no other PS5 games that I'm super stoked for. But watching the state of play, so much of what they showed, it's like I want to play that. Mm-hmm. I want to play that, yeah. or at least like like some amount of curiosity, right? Like not necessarily yeah. hype through right. the roof. Um, and it's all stuff that's coming out, you know, relatively soon. You can tell, Ben, that moment, the rejuvenation period, where it's finally like, I've destroyed the evil, and then now, oh, everything's green again. Like, they are cranking the definition on that. They're just like, run it again, run it again, let's get that frame rate up. Like, how many blades of grass can we cram into the sequence? And then, like, Returnal, um, I think, Brandon, you said, like, oh, this is dark on the stream. To me, that means, like, Oh, this is this is gonna be as Huber would say an HDR showpiece. Oh, sure, yeah. yeah. Cause like, you know, on a on a HDR monitor, that game will look probably pretty great. Like all those, the dark areas will be exposed. You can actually see them. Um, yeah, I, Returnal looks pretty crazy. I don't know what it is about like hair and horror. But like, man, that gets to me. Anytime something's really kind of wavy, yeah. and um, the uh, one of one of the final confrontations, of Evil Wood Two, there's a lot of a lot of head Japanese bobbing. Japanese horror, it's like, man. Ah! <laughs> yeah. Um, you know what it is? Uh, it's um, incorrect gravity. Oh, there's okay. Just an un- there's an uncanniness to it that your brain can't process because it shouldn't be looking like that it looks like it's like flowing like underwater ignoring Got gravity it. yeah so you just know there's like a subtle uncanny thing to well, it's it. also kind of hard to get a sense of like really what you're looking at like when you have a yeah. lot of this kind of stuff like getting in the way bloodborne's got a lot of that too a lot of fur a lot of um a lot of just crazy appendages and stuff and you're just like where do i hit this thing um and so yeah that was er- erotic combat game bloodborne mm. <laughs> a personal only- favorite we could get more erotic at 60 frames. This was the yeah. we, we had a Bloodborne update that was like the Final Fantasy VII update. Yeah. Oh my God! If they put Yuffie in Bloodborne, game over. <laughs> <laughs> Is that hard mode or easy mode? I can't tell. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well. But and I thought there was just a lot of. We saw a lot of gameplay from Returnal and the. The story aspect is fascinating of her, you know, having to replay all this stuff again. But again, like not really getting into the specifics of the game. It's like you repeat that premise to me and it's like that's not really going to mean anything until I actually like get into the, the, the story and figure out what's going on. 
what uh, Returnal did in the state of play that I really loved is just had a nice continuous shot. Multiple targets, mm. a lot of movement. You saw her little yeah. dash ability. And it was like, oh, this looks pretty hard you know it's not it really showcased yeah how like frenetic and difficult that yeah. game will be yeah i think that's it's a good point like long shots that you actually see what it feels like to play for a bit rather than you know shoot cut shoot cut and you don't really get an idea also something that i liked in this trailer that we've had hints of before but that we got a little more of is this kind of uh otherworldly freaky story element kind of stuff with this house and going mm-hmm. into first person because we keep getting tricked that it's PT, you know. Um, and and just, like, I think focusing on an older woman is cool because that's not a perspective that you get in a lot of, certainly not a lot of action games. Um, and I think that'll be really interesting, and, and exploring that kind of through that lens will be really cool. And it looks like they're doing really neat, weird yeah stuff visually and gameplay wise which is pushing the pushing the gen in a way that i like you know i like it when new gen games do like really wacky stuff like that yeah what i'm hoping is that it will come together even a fraction as well as hades right like Mm -hmm. that's what i kind of get the sense of it's like okay here's a game where you're going to be like returning to similar things but you're going to be picking up upgrades and different power-ups but you're going to be getting little slices of stories along the way too. So, it seems like a lesson that a lot of people should take from Hades is like, yeah, roguelikes are awesome, but the roguelikes that people really love are the ones that like keep giving you that new stuff and new threads, mm-hmm. and they evolve and progress like a regular game. Yeah. They don't just like FTL you back to the menu. Well, and what's great um, about Hades is how it cramps so much of that stuff in a way that feels like it allows for a good flow like mm-hmm. I, I feel like the the narrative and the the, the progression and uh, there's a lot of ways that you progress in Hades right like it never never feels like the game like comes to a crashing halt it, it's mm-hmm. like it, it it goes in such a way that like you get done with something and you go right back in and I, I love that about it well not to mention a roguelike where dying feels like a victory too because mm-hmm. you get the next cool story thing like mm-hmm it's a win-win like gameplay is super fun and then dying you're like oh cool i get to see what what's happening at the hub now it's like can't go wrong the master works all can't go wrong am i the only one that is done with that doesn't need to see another trailer for death loop or if i do i need to see how we play as this woman that's chasing him right because they keep being like you know her it's like you're at the point i think in these trailers where you need to I need to know what is that a player? What's happening? Like, well, how is that? How is that person I experiencing that, this world? I said that right when it started in State of Play. I'm like, I think I don't need to see more of this game. I'm just kind of ready. It shows to so well. It's got knowledge. such a great style. We got a brand new slam and song today. Deja yeah, Vu is the name of the trailer. Great. I think the the song is also called Deja Vu. Okay. Um, but very Bond. Bond. Yeah. yeah, I ended up I ended up enjoying that trailer more than I thought I was at the start. Um, they make good trailers. I just don't but know. I think. Yeah, I think what you're saying, Brandon, like, really, we don't need any more trailers. We didn't even need this trailer. Mm. What we could use, though, is, like, a solid, like, demo. Like, mm-hmm. right. show us somebody, two people, playing this game. Yes. What happens? How does it work? Yes. And I think, I think if we were not COVID, we may have gotten that. Like, we might have had an onstage you know, like a guy and a girl dressed like the characters come out and play as them or something. And we may, I mean, who knows, but like <laughs> the good stuff, <laughs> the good stuff, God, the it. stuff we're all in the biz for. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, effectively the death, death makes great trailers, but we've sort of gotten the same thing like three or four times now. And like, none of them have a date. None of them explain exactly what this game is. It honestly, I'm a little nervous for death loop. Um, like, Last year, I, like, insta-locked it onto my Fantasy Game Critic League, and this year I hesitated because I'm like, I don't know, something's starting to feel a little weird. Like, what? why aren't they saying more or showing more without editing through everything? Well, the stuff that Arcane does, like, super well, they're they're showing off a lot. And so oh, it's yeah. like, yeah. you know, initially I'm like, oh, yeah, that juggling, that's really cool. 
and then in this one we saw like some stealth we saw him go invisible and he's sneaking right past npcs i'm just like they are so good at this and then they're like yeah but this dual mechanic it's like Yes. When are when are you going to explain that? <laughs> I'm really right. I'm pumped for that. And I also get a little nervous in that like more trailers that are just kind of general pizzazz, fun, you know, graphics and him dying over and over and over again. It's like he's like, well, now we'll show you this target. It's like stop showing me targets. <laughs> I kind of I want to experience some of the stuff, yeah. you know, going into the game. And it's uh, the internet told me May 21st. I don't know if they haven't made an official date. That's what Google said. Um, I don't know. Let me. I can look it up. That's, That's what Google what, told what me. Who knows? Um, in my inbox. But they are sticking to this year, so I for can't. For some reason, I keep getting emails from some restaurant in Malibu, which I have no idea why that's coming to my press email. But okay, save that for press release. Me. Um, <laughs> I just I I because of how much they cherish the trailers that they're making, they're just just reveling in the style of this game. I'm just, I see a lot of trailers coming and I hope this game doesn't kind of like in a Ubisoft kind of way where you're like, all right, (laughs) I'm good. I'm sold on this. I don't need to see eight more trailers. Um, But um, that game's got style. Yeah, first confirmed. Yeah, all right, cool. Okay. Was that in the trailer? I think we're getting Did they do something cutesy by putting it at the bottom? No, I had to look it up. Yeah, I was checking the dates for a lot of this stuff and uh, did not see it. we got to see, speaking of seeing more gameplay of Returnal, a game that we were excited about, I was pretty pumped for Solar Ash when we got to see uh, some gameplay to that from that. Yeah. We got to see some traversal, some combat. Your, yeah. your Hyper Light Drifter meets uh, Jet Set Radio. Sold. <laughs> yeah. Meets Shadow of the Colossus, meets Mario Odyssey. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> and I thought I had a good amount of time in explaining, like, you know, here's this one little snake boss you can kind of get a vibe of what we're talking about fighting this thing but we're not going to show you like a ton of it won't even show you maybe later phases of that specific boss um as long as we're talking about how many trailers a game needs to have like i think i'm pretty good on solar ash maybe like one big you know kind of lead up uh you know going to launch yeah. but i think this is something on well, this one they said this year right mm-hmm. i don't think they said a specific just 2021 day. yeah okay which i which came as a surprise to me because I, I have friends who are working in this company one of my best friends, Jack, is like a character designer and stuff on their CG modeler, whatever. I don't know what his job title is. <laughs> I should ask him specifically. Stuff maker. And I know Alex, the the main guy. Um, and yeah, yeah like I I hadn't had an inkling that it was that close to done yet. Or, but it's cool. Yeah, they have a uh, PlayStation blog post up as well, but it does just say 2021. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think we're getting to the point, you know, like indie games really, um, you know, they, they they strive for for innovation, you know, to really stand out from the crowd. But like at the same time, like this is kind of almost having just recently played Pathless, like it is slowly like Haven, slowly becoming its own genre, like bright color, fun navigation, you know, like there is a specific vibe. And so when he was like skating along the clouds, I was like, OK, I haven't done this, but I've kind of done this. <laughs> you right. know, like I can see maybe what inspired you. Um, but um it's it's yeah it's got to be a trick you know i think you what did you what game did you mention ben during the reactions you were like anything that kind of that gives me vibes oh of, <laughs> was it jet set radio two. sonic adventure uh, 2 yeah. yeah but it's you know i i imagine that's so tough for those developers getting a sense of like how good that feels like when do we mm. stop really putting you know the fine tuning on you know like just that that specific glide, you know glide because it wasn't what I, what I liked about it is it didn't look like the game was playing itself. Like, there were definitely parts where it's like, you really got to see that grapple spot. You really got to propel yourself yeah. just fast enough to get to that goo on the wall to climb it. Um, and so, as well as they were doing in the trailer, I imagine there's going to be lots of clips of me playing this game. Like, what? You know. <laughs> um, so I bet that's a really tough... Uh, Hyper Light Drifter was line. a challenging game. Mm-hmm. It was. And that that's something like Hyper Light Drifter is a game that I want to love more than I do. Um, like, obviously, I love the soundtrack, the look of it. There were just a few little tiny things, like the timing of dodging and stuff, that just I never clicked with. Mm. Um, so hopefully, I actually have playtested this a couple, like a year and a half ago. Um, it didn't look anything like this, but um, it felt really good then. So... Um, I think I'm allowed to say that, but um, <laughs> beep, 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 beep. I'm sorry if I wasn't allowed to say remix, that. But, remix, remix. Uh, I played remix, it. Remix. Yeah, I played it a long time ago. It looked different. I liked it. Like wh- whoa, yeah. whoa. I'm sorry, Heart. Machine. All of a sudden, like a SWAT team. <laughs> yeah. Ah. No, but it. Um, what I meant to say is like it felt. It already felt good. Um. So, 
I think that, that it you, felt I'm good you. is where you cross the line. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Assumptions being made. Um, I got to be honest. I'm not gonna. I don't want to offend anybody. I think Deathloop's gonna be fantastic. Really curious to see that uh, Yuffie chapter. If I could have any game that was in this state of play on my PlayStation Five right now, it'd be Sifu, hands down. I Ooh, am Sifu. from uh, Slow uh, Slow Clap, who made Absolver. So this is a. Yeah. Uh, and I love like his, his Huber's face light up. We were like, Huber, his family's been murdered. He was like, Yay! <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> good, Huber good old revenge. Um, yeah, this is just a guy learning a specific part. I don't have the name of a specific type of karate. Um, to just just whoop everybody's ass. And it was a very cinematic trailer, but Sifu. I could still really I could see the counters. I could see a lot of the moves specifically he was doing. There's a crazy like aging mechanic that when you die, you come back older. Um, but um, just looked really straightforward. I thought it sold, sold itself really well. And I just kind of want to um, touch on Absolver just quickly because I remember seeing that like at PAX or something. And I was like, wow, that looks like a fighting game. I would Not, not a fighting game, but a combat game. Combat hand to hand game. combat that I, played, I would be bad at. That looked fairly I played a lot complex. of Absolver. I, um, I think I got to the end boss and then some other game came out. And I, so I never actually beat it, but I got I, like almost beat the entire game. Uh, I really liked it. The The cool thing about it was they were sort of experimenting with a thing about um, making your own kind of martial arts style. You could combine right. a bunch of different moves into your move set, which I thought was a very cool idea, and it worked well in that game. It was a hard game, but uh, it was really fun. I liked it. Absolver's, Absolver's hype. Does this feel like an evolution of their style? Does this seem like yeah. something that, um, yeah, you know, I don't want to call Absolver like a stepping stone, but um, that maybe they wanted but to do something was. a little more <laughs> concrete and narratively. Yeah, um, there's definitely a character driving this. Um, man, yeah. So that is officially on my radar. I'm very excited for that. Um, I feel bad for Oddworld Soulstorm because this is a game we've seen a lot. <laughs> this is a game that just ma keeps coming back. I demoed this game like two years ago, and um, I think it looks very interesting, it has some of the busiest, craziest background in, I've ever seen in any game. There's just a lot going on back there, a lot of fun. It's that 2.9D. The 2.9D uh, it really creates like rich environments, uh, and I... <laughs> Somebody said in their save of play where they were like, I think it was you, Blood. You're like, I'm glad we're finally seeing some new areas. I'm like, which are also brown. <laughs> so I don't know how much. <laughs> there's, a, there's a few that weren't as brown. But uh, but busy, I think, I think is a good word. I mm. think that's why this is a hard game to, to watch or to see a trailer of because you can't follow the action. Yeah. Right? Like, mm -hmm. there's, there's mm. your character. You've got all the other characters following you. There's this complex, you know, room full of traps and things that you're trying to get by and so when you're just like cutting from one thing to another it's just like okay what am i yeah. looking man at? that's so crazy i feel like i feel like the the allies keep saying they're pretty lukewarm on it and i don't know if i'm just like a little bit more familiar with odd world but i did not have those issues like it looks I, I thought today was like a great showing of it i think it looks yeah I, very no i think today is a better showing but i'm just saying that like in terms of like being able to identify and get excited for the gameplay, it's like mm -hmm. it's again, it's a game that would be better served from some kind of a demo. Mm. Yeah. You know, I don't and know. I, I not didn't... as much of a like trying to hit like a, a mass market hype kind of a thing. Yeah, I I see what you're saying and I totally see why you're saying it, uh, for sure. But I just didn't I didn't have that problem. Like there wasn't there wasn't a moment in that trailer where I was like I cannot tell what is going on. I felt like every cut, I was like, okay, this this is what's happening here. This is the the type. This is the mechanic that they're showing off here. This is the the gag that they're doing here. Like I, I felt like it was pretty clear to me. I think yeah, the the decimation of you and your your followers is very clear. <laughs> I think mm. that's something that's and they don't want to show too much of because that stuff is really satisfying to 
uh, in a terrible way to encounter in game. But one thing that I, uh, one thing Ben that I will say that is definitely a positive that I remember from demoing the game is uh, crafting was a big part of it. And so we're getting resources if we're going through and, and for demo purposes, they're like, we're just gonna give you a bunch of stuff and then you can make whatever you want to with it. And then you give it to your followers and then some of them can use it. And so I remember there was like one part where it's like, oh, I'm gonna storm through this and I'm gonna give them all incendiary grenades. Well, like they're just gonna light everything on fire. And so now you gotta get <laughs> through this area that's on fire. Uh, mm -hmm. And so, you know, you can kind of turn up the chaos if you want to, or if you know you're gonna get into one of these like travel section or elevator sections or like train sections where like there's just gonna be a bunch of dudes attacking you from a distance. It's nice to have, you know, I'll give you guys some healing stuff or I'll give you guys some poison stuff or, um, so there's a lot of, um, it, it's, there's a lot of chaos and it's tough. I guess the point I'm making, Ben, is it's tough for, um, it's a, it's a challenge for a marketing campaign, but not necessarily mm -hmm. for getting into the game and, and um, even just doing silly things like trying to, I remember like trying to bank a grenade off a wall so it would bounce off something else and then blow up a switch to open a door so I could get other dudes out. Um, there was a lot of like, oh, I can finally get guys out. Hey, come with me. And then they would immediately die. And you're like, ah, <laughs> like I'm supposed to wait to do that thing to come back and then grab them and then I can get them out. Um, but um Tough puzzle games, puzzle-ish games are tough uh, to sell, especially in a in a quick state of play. Um, and uh, we saw a little bit more of Knockout City, which had a much better trailer than it had yeah. in the uh, in the Nintendo Direct. Um, much more in line. I'm not necessarily Knockout City's not on my list, but uh, uh, I think it it's sold itself like it is. Um, we're getting a PS5 version of Crash Bandicoot 4, which we probably could have anticipated on March 12th. Uh, dumb yeah, well, they announced that earlier, frames. but yeah, so is this just a trailer confirming the announcement? Got to for the see, most part? yes. Damiani did not seem pleased. He was like, no new features. I'm like, oh, <laughs> uh, they do have the adaptive triggers. You can't carry over your saves. They were playing up the, the cards on the PlayStation 5. They're like, if you wanted to, 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 yeah. to platinum this sucker, it's easier to do. You get that guidance uh, on the PlayStation 5. And it's then, so crazy because I think for like... I think it's I like Crash 4 a lot and I'm glad it's getting a PS5 version but I feel like for what they announced the length of the trailer did not support the yeah. announcement I feel like sure. like it yeah I don't know it wasn't like a super crazy like you know to Damiani's point like it wasn't yeah. it wasn't out of the ordinary I guess they like talked about the plot like, what are you doing right. yeah <laughs> go, go, going Somewhere detailed the on the plot in a Crash trailer regardless <laughs> let alone <laughs> well, an it, update to yeah. a version we've already played I was like, <laughs> it, it would make more sense i guess if it, they were like revealing crash 4 for the first time but right, yeah right uh and you know we talk about potentially odd world selling itself to people that are the most familiar with odd world it seems like five nights at freddy's is not bothering selling itself at all <laughs> to anyone that's not a five nights at freddy's fan and having watched uh a little bit of other versions of that game security breach does seem Strange. It does seem like it's a, a different Seems vibe. Way different. Um, yeah, yeah more exploration going on, more active dodging. Where you could see one of them coming at you from a distance. It's not like a lot of just the sneak up gags that they would, you know, do before. We're getting it this year. I, that's yeah. That seems strange. Unlike the yeah, uh, Crash Bandicoot Four details. I would have liked some more details about that. Also. Are we the most prickly bunch in this industry when it comes to is that Silent Hill? Are they about to talk about Silent Hill? Could this be Silent Hill? <laughs> no, it, we're no, not. It's everybody not, wants okay. a new Silent Hill. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's everybody not, wants it. This is not an uncommon desire. Why does it seem like every event that happens, like there's at least one game that might be? You know, there's one thing. Because, you know, because we're suckers. <laughs> well, I mean, like, do you no, like scary it's, games? It's pretty, Maybe it's pretty like this. logical. It's pretty logical. <laughs> like, we had PT, then we're robbed of PT, and then, you know, in the last year, there have been a whole tornado of Silent Hill rumors. So, people anticipating it, <sighs> following all of those events. I think makes a lot of sense. I, this isn't coming from nowhere, you know? Yeah. Well, but then, like, I, I wonder if Sony, like, the people at State of Play are just so unaware that they do stuff like, do you like Silent Hill? Well, then check out this. <laughs> like, they basically intro one game per State of Play as though it's about to be Silent Hill. And it's like, are they doing it on purpose? I, or are they just completely unaware of what's I, happening? Like, I do. Or are they like, messing the, with us? The line that they said was like, do you like scary games? And it was like, 
Five Nights at Freddy's was like not even in my brain, like <laughs> yeah. not, not, in, not in the <laughs> orbit of what I was thinking about. <laughs> well, in Five Nights, like my only, I, I, we're just not the the, the demo yeah, for, yeah, sure. for Five right. Nights. Like yeah. I, my my experience with that is like I have a little cousin who's like fifteen who used to play it, you know, and yeah. like I wonder if they'll still play it this version of it um get out of my no. boomer state of play god damn it yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah i want my millennial games I, like silent hill I, what but i mean i imagine if like you're a horror game developer and you have a horror game to announce in 2021 that has nothing to do with silent hill it's like you're preparing your trailer and it's like what can we throw into the first five seconds of this trailer so people will know just definitively it is not silent hill <laughs> Well, I mean, Returnal, like, man, like, that first Returnal I know. one, like, that first shot was PT. <laughs> it was like, at the end of and the Returnal like, trailer today, that we knew was Returnal, she, like, goes into the house, and we're like, wait a minute, <laughs> does Returnal PT. just become is this, PT? <laughs> is this whole thing a ruse? <laughs> is, this, is it all? I think the Smash, Smash trailers have, like, broken our minds, yeah. and we just think everything is a trailer for something else. We also... We're very lucky when we were streaming our reactions today because before we went offline, chat was kind enough to link us not one, but two Final Fantasy mobile games that were also <laughs> announced. And this kind of. Not just Final Fantasy mobile games, Final Fantasy VII yes. remake right. mobile games. Yeah. Now, we don't have Brad on. The last time, one of the last times we had Brad on was after they trademarked the names First Soldier and Ever Crisis to possibly conceive of what those games could be. I don't know. Ben, did you see anyone on the internet that was like, well, clearly, First Soldier's a Battle Royale. I mean, we have to get that out of the no, way. No, 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 one, no, one, no one was cruel enough to predict a mobile Battle Royale for that. <laughs> no. I think no. this is wonderfully harmless. I don't know. This is We're going to get to see parts of Midgar we didn't see in Remake. This is canon. It's canon. It's <laughs> canon. According to... According That's to the, the worst f- part. The official website's I canon. Mean, 30 years before the events of Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. You know, Yuffie's filling in one gap. This is filling in another. I'm picturing you as like a comic strip character That's, right now, Joe. What? <laughs> like, uh, it seems completely inoffensive. I mean, it's canon. Yeah. It's mobile. <laughs> I think part of the problem that I have with mobile games, right, and you see this all the time, is they're like, hey, here's this mobile game of this franchise you love. We're going to take these characters and locations and things that you know so you will spend more money and just like watching the trailer of this mobile battle royale game and it's like yeah that's that's the church where Aerith is and Cloud wakes up (laughs) yep I definitely know that location you know that I know that location (laughs) and so I think just that type of mentality is what makes mobile games sure inoffensive but not (laughs) like inspiring well and it's it's just like it just saps all the meaning out of right. anything right right like, exactly just throw it all in there like yeah just have a shootout anywhere you yes want. exactly your <laughs> memories become a product that right. they're selling back to you yeah i could see the person at the top of the leaderboards when this game goes offline like tweeting being like am i the soldier <laughs> like no you're not this is my cannon it's me right do I get to hang out with Cloud now? Like, no, that's not. <laughs> that's not this works. Um, Why would you want to? Cloud's a wet well, this blanket. Is what, yeah. uh, well, but the, I mean, this not only. The, the, does wait? Does thirty? Wait, wait a minute. Does thirty years before Final Fantasy VII remake? Does Walmart even make sense? I don't. I don't know that. It, I'd have. You'd have to. Somebody would have to. It's explain been around, it. hasn't it? It, they make remember. it feel like Don Corneo kind of like made it happen. I thought he like no. took over. Yeah, I think Walmart's I been know. around for a while. Yeah. Well, Maybe. Well, blood for perhaps uh, four ninety nine uh, in at purchase. <laughs> you could find out, <laughs> right? If you end up in top three and yeah. get the lore right, nuggets. right, right, right. But this, yeah. you know, Ben, this not only makes me sad <laughs> about, you know. I mean, if you say Final Fantasy Battle Royale, man, I got ideas. Like, there's some fun things we could do potentially with that concept. But, like, mm-hmm. has is there good Final Fantasy PvP? Like, 14 didn't really do it all that um, well, and, like, Dissidia is kind of a headache. Or and... Not Disgaea. Dissidia on PSP uh, was kind of fun. Okay. But I feel like the, the most recent Dissidia 
uh, that was on like PlayStation Four was just like the classic Final Fantasy spinoff of being like way more <laughs> convoluted than it needed to be. Um, and I wonder if that approach will be taken here. I'm down for the idea because they're like throwing spells, and it's like, yeah, this kind of could be. At least it's not like Resident Evil where they just <laughs> there's so many bad PvP games. You know, that's yeah. like its own genre. Of Resident Evil is like bad, bad PvP. Well, you know, Lukewarm when people think PvP. Final Fantasy, the first thing they think of is player versus player. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a big, you know, certainly <laughs> not only are like <laughs> side story games in Final Fantasy a huge thing, side story games in Final Fantasy 7 are like a huge thing. <laughs> uh, and you have even just hinted at it, Ben, at how First Soldier will obviously make money. There's going to be a ton of microtransactions. Both of these mobile games mm-hmm. that they announced are free to play. You look at First Soldier and it's like, all right, I, you know, I, I know exactly how they're going to make money. Ever Crisis is the other game that they announced today that I am extremely confused by. Quote, a chapter-structured single-player game covering the whole of the Final Fantasy VII timeline, including the events of the original game and the Final Fantasy VII compilation titles. See, this is awesome, because this, to me, this has a purpose, right? Whereas I I look at the Battle Royale and I'm like, I guess with Ever Crisis, it's, it's like an acknowledgement of like, we went a little nuts, okay? We went a little nuts. There's a lot to keep track of here. Here's like this neat, nice package that you can play chapter by chapter to kind of like fill in your own personal gaps in a style that looks really awesome. And I believe somebody said it in the reactions, like this this is kind of like what people were maybe envisioning. I think Damiani was talking about it. Yeah. It was like, this is what people were envisioning like a remake could be like in an alternate timeline, right? And so, it just feels like much more convincing from a why does this exist standpoint. Like I, I feel like I can build a case for it. Well, and something that I realized after we were done reacting was because during the reaction I was like, well, they must be releasing it chapter by chapter, and maybe you pay for the later chapters, whatever, and maybe they'll hold off on stuff that goes past where Final Fantasy VII Remake Part One ended. But now I'm thinking. Maybe the opposite is better because they want you to be refreshed on the old version of the story so that you'll understand right. Remake Part 2. Right. Because right. unless you remember 7 and how that went, right. the, the crazy bananas divergence of Remake... But that's, that's what's so great yeah. about Ever Crisis, right? Is they can take not only that original game, but all the other things, now that Remake Part 1 is already out and and combine it in a way where it's like, okay, th- everything is just going to line up even better and clearer and make more sense. Yeah. That's that's my hope, anyway. It's Final Fantasy VII we're talking about, but do you, that's my hope. Do you think it'll be one-to-one with the old games, or, or will it be like a truncated version of everything? I don't... I, I think it's going to be like Cliff Notes, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, then I kind presenting of it chapter that? by chapter, right, is is yeah. obviously going to affect how that yeah, plays cause, out. Yeah, because Final Fantasy VII didn't just, like, stop after you got to Wall Market mm. or whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah I, I think that uh, what it reminds me of is uh, how they handled some of the uh, Kingdom Hearts collections. Mm. And, you know, how they took, like, some of the mobile games and stuff. And there's like, we're just going to turn this into a movie. You know, uh, right. and so I think there are things out there like Crisis Core that even though like people would love a Crisis Core remake yes. or port or anything, I think this is sort of their solution. It's like right. we're going to give you Crisis Core and Advent Children and all of these things in one package, so that like you want to catch up on all of this other weird stuff that wasn't in the original game. Here it is. Yeah, and Blood. You comparing it to Kingdom Hearts is is great because like there's so many pl- it's so it's easier than it was before now like you you can they it's like they're thinking and aware of like this is a lot to take in so here's this package you know here's 1.5 here's 2.5 here is a way that you can digest this story and like if they're not going to give us a Crisis Core remake it's cool that. Because Crisis Core matters, right? 
but they're not saying it matters and I and go get a PSP, I guess. That's not what they're saying. It's like this matters and because it matters, we're going to make it as convenient for you as possible to digest this, which is awesome. How does it make money? It's Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> well, it's, no, it's I mean, free it's free-to-play. Play. So it's like, I think, I, I how think does this have microtransactions? One, how does this... Your first that's one's what free, I would and imagine. then the other chapters first are... First one's free. Okay. That's, yeah. that's, that's a common thing hmm. in, in mobile games, is giving you the opening chapter and then charging for subsequent chapters, for sure. Um, do you think this will be stuck to mobile? Do you think this will ever come to PlayStation or other consoles down the road, or...? Are you um, bummed it's on mobile? Or are you Fred, like, Fred was talking about anywhere? it. I believe I believe the pocket edition of Final Fantasy XV came out on Switch, right? Yeah. It did, yeah. Yeah, so I I, I definitely think this is coming out on Switch. Um, it it might logical. even come out on other things eventually. Yeah, but, it could be. Yeah. One of the things that's holding back my expectations a little bit is this has to trail behind Remake Part 2, I would imagine. So, like, this isn't going to show us what valentine's gonna look like in seven or like this isn't gonna show us areas outside of midgar before we get the first trailer for part two right i think it i think it will because it's well i think that if it does it's going to be showing us just the og the cliffs cliffs notes of the og versions of these games you know so they don't have to rewrite stuff they're just like shortening it Sure, um, I just mean like character designs were like a huge thing. I remember when like people finally mm, saw Tifa, mm. it was like, ah, you know, and like to me, you know, That's having because it's Tifa, right? right? But yeah, to me, not yeah. having that much experience, I'm like, she kind of looks like she did in Advent Children. This is just, you know, uh, right, you know, not knowing a lot about it, but uh, okay. I just imagine when I'm seeing because it's weird, they kind of have a threefold design. They have this kind of like dressed up old school polygon style from the from seven. The character portraits in combat are actually like anime like they're actually like they're, yeah. they're, well, they're like its own style um, well it's, it's such a cool nod to the original final fantasy 7 where like your mo- your character models were different while you were taller. running right. and, around and a lot and of and the old final fantasies in general that you would always right. get in six you'd be right. like who's that guy you, know, you get some really cool you know detailed like right. close-up of them uh and then when you actually get into combat the character models are you know different from the character models in the overworld so it's that specifically it's like are they gonna let me fight with a character that i didn't was not playable and see right. like oh there they are like that wasn't revealed in a state of play or some maybe for you know, playstation trailer an in-app purchase they might <laughs> yeah, then you get to see it for 4.99 um, I, right? I, I got a i got a little quiz here for you <laughs> okay so Final Fantasy XV Pocket Edition is on uh, PlayStation and stuff as well. Okay. How much do you think that costs? Forty dollars. Too, too much. Thirty four ninety nine. It's square. Forty nine ninety nine. Maybe twenty. It's, it's 20. thirty bucks. Thirty bucks. Okay. Thirty twenty nine ninety nine. Twenty nine ninety nine. Yep. I was gonna say that's too much, but I haven't played the Pocket Edition of Final Fantasy XV, so. Maybe it somehow justifies it, but it's square we're talking about, man. So square tax has gone down by five dollars, I guess. Should everybody set their expectations at pocket edition levels, just in terms of general structure? Does it seem like something they were like, Well that worked. Let's apply it here. Maybe. I didn't Maybe. play it either, so I, I did know. not play either version of that game, so I don't know. Um didn't play it. Yeah, I, since I haven't played Pocket Edition, it's it's hard for me to mm. know where my expectations should should be. But honestly, that trailer that we saw, I liked almost everything about it. Like, I liked the style. I liked the character art that they were showing. I like that it's not mm-hmm. just a retelling of Final Fantasy VII. Like, I'm just sitting there nodding my head and being like, yeah, these are all smart decisions. So I'm I'm very optimistic about it. I was, frankly, in disbelief. I mean, when they showed all those logos at the end, I was like, no. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, that's it's five games? Pretty cool. I mean, just, just in terms <laughs> of... George of Cerberus? Are... Are you sure? Yeah, but, wait, but I played Dirt <laughs> Servers. But it'd just be neat. Yeah, it'd just be neat to get clarification on all these things. I wonder if like it did. They didn't show Advent Children, right? I wonder if that's gonna get like lip service or if we, that'd be a fun boss fight to play. Just give me <laughs> that <laughs> Advent Children music, baby. Woo! So I shouldn't play First Soldier. Just to just to know, just like for a frame trap. It, uh, ben, if I bring First Soldier to frame trap, will I be allowed to talk about it, or is amazing. that no? Uh, I mean, I wanna I wanna be clear, like. 
I'm gonna play for soldier. I feel morally, <laughs> I feel morally obligated to play a thing I'm that has Final Fantasy VII. On this game, but yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna empty my savings into it. But I just like, I, I, what I'm trying to say is, I, I feel like I've been down this road before. You know, like I don't think I'm gonna. I'd love to be proven wrong. Totally open to be proven wrong. But I don't think I'm going to play it and be like, wow, this mobile battle royale game with Final Fantasy VII slapped into it is blowing me away. Like, I just I just don't think that will happen, but I am curious about it. And now, a word from our sponsors. You know that credit card, the one you're afraid to look at to see what the balance is, that you've been avoiding? Been avoiding your debt, but it's time to confront it. Upstart can help you face it and finally pay it off. Last year showed us that you never know what life is going to throw at you, and if you used credit cards to pay for unexpected expenses, it can be overwhelming to manage that debt. Take control with Upstart so you know exactly what to expect. If you have multiple credit cards, you know that tracking multiple balances, due dates, and website logins can be stressful. Upstart makes things simple with one monthly payment in one place. Upstart is the fast and easy way to get a personal loan to pay off your debt all online. Whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, over half a million people have used Upstart to get a simple fixed monthly payment. Upstart finds smarter rates with trusted partners because they assume more than just your credit, they assess more than just your credit score. With a five minute online rate check, you can see your rate upfront for loans from $1,000 to $50,000. You can get approved the same day and can receive funds as fast as one business day. If debt is taking over your life, it's time to get a fresh start with Upstart. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash easy allies. That's upstart.com slash easy allies. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit income and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash easy allies. It would be a nice way to start 2021. And we help people pay off some debt, help people financially. People help us financially. Nice you never to... know when a free-to-play Final Fantasy VII mobile game might be sprung on you. So... You never know when you say, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you look at that statement, you're like, Re really? Really? <laughs> did I need that many Tifa skins? <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did. I tell you what, I tell you what an exciting sponsor that we have these guys pocket. A sponsor that I use for a lot of stuff around my office is Logitech, and all mm. Daniel Bloodworth wanted in the world, all he wanted in the world, <laughs> all he, what he asked in Santa Claus for this year was a mouse. That's all I want. I just want a mouse. Please, can I have a mouse? Well, Logitech sent us a mouse. Sent me the mouse. Ha <laughs> ha! And I tried it out. The Logitech G Pro X Super Light Gaming Mouse. I received this mouse before I received this copy, and the first thought I had when removing it from the package is, wow, that's a, that's a really light mouse. <laughs> it's like, and then boom, there it is in all caps, super light. Um, this is, I mean, you know, I got, oh, I also got a Logitech mouse here that I'm, I have to use now because I put the, the, it's on the desk, it's on my desk that is in our uh, office area blood. All you gotta do is go by the office and you can get that. And oh, okay. later report on your specific details. But it came with the USB plug-in, so there's no battery. So that was nice. I was like, oh, this is really cool. This could be my mouse now. And Blood's like, it's my mouse. I was like, oh, all right. All, all right. Blood wanted was Gotta mouse. give it up. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta give it for Blood. Um, I, I've used the Logitech mouse for years. Yeah, baby. Um, 502, baby. Plugged in like a sucker. No, it's fine. You can plug I've it. Yeah. Can plug it. But uh, yeah, I was gonna, I was plugging this sucker in uh, and charging it, which is nice because I got, um, for various per per reasons, Xbox uh, Series X controllers and the like. I got a lot of double A's. You never know when you're gonna need them. Uh, so it's always nice to, to have one available to use for in the mouse. But uh, much like these jazzy headphones that I got, I was like, oh, I can just use that. My little USB port in the back there, I can just, there's another Logitech device that I can plug in. I cannot wait to hear what Bloodworth thinks whenever he gets his hands on it. Logitech G Pro X Super Light Gaming Mouse is designed, well, my goodness. That's a hot ass My you got there. <laughs> that is a hot ass. <laughs> Logitech G Pro X Super Light Gaming Mouse is designed with the world's leading pros to engineer the world's best competitive gaming mouse. With hyper minimal redesign, the Pro X Super Light is their lightest and fastest pro mouse ever weighing at under 63 grams, almost 25% lighter than standard pro wireless mouse. 
zero misses. Logitech G Exclusive Hero 25K Sensor provides unrivaled precision speed and consistency. Pro X Super Light delivers extreme accuracy and ultra fine control. No pressure, blood for complete confidence, especially <laughs> during the intense split-second moments of tournament play. Powered by Lightspeed, Pro X Super Light is their fastest and most reliable pro mouse yet. And it's available in black and white. What we got was cool black. That's um, multiple colors there. For a limited time, Logitech G is offering our listeners express shipping at LogitechG.com. Use code, and it's a big one, write it down, Easy Allies Free Ship 228 for express shipping today. That's ex what? Don't you chuckle. It was long. They're going to write it down and they're going to get free shipping. Darn it. That's express shipping for all Logitech G products with promo code Easy Allies Free Ship 228. Hurry now since the promo code expires in three days. Get on it. Go to From logitechg.com. From three days ago, Phil. Go to logitechg.com <laughs> and use code Easy Allies Free Ship 228 to get express shipping. And if you are a patron of Easy Allies, thank you. I'll tell you what was not tweeted out today by Square Enix or in the state of play was something else that Sony talked about this week. And I guess they wanted to get this out of the way because they knew they weren't going to be talking about any other VR titles or specifically stuff coming exclusively to PlayStation 5. But that PlayStation 5 there is going to get its own VR headset. Woo! I wasn't sure. <laughs> you know, like, right. he, I got a weird take. This is where I'm coming from. I love VR so much. I am... Uh, you know what I played the other night? Minecraft. And because I never played it in VR. And I was like, let's I, do this. I've no, never, I've played Minecraft so many times, but I like. I didn't know you could play Minecraft in VR. And that definitely oh, yeah. feels like something I should have known. Oh, it's terrific. It's really cool. great. Can you teleport? Um, is, you don't have to walk, right? I, I walked. I don't know if you can set up the teleportation stuff. You, I, I'm not walking that fast in Minecraft. I mean, maybe, mm -hmm. I guess when you get mm -hmm. later on in the game, you're, you got to hustle across the environment. But um uh, you, what you do is in, in Minecraft, you build a one-to-one -one of your house, and then you can literally just walk everywhere. Right. Because it's one-to-one. -one. I don't want to be Let's in just my talk house, about, though. Let's just I want to be Minecraft. in, like, yes, exactly. a cool <laughs> house. <laughs> Sorry, Brad. I don't know. But you can <laughs> enter it however you want. Um, but, I, and I want, I'm stoked that Sony is going to invest in PlayStation 5 VR. I would not have been surprised, just me personally. I would not have been surprised if Sony came out this week and we're like, now nah, we're done. <laughs> you know, like it was fun. Like we had a good time. PSVR is really like a PS4 thing. Um, it just didn't, you know, please go support those games and play it. And it'll still work on your PlayStation 5 if you want to download that stuff. But uh, didn't sell a lot. We're done. Um, but no. Did it not sell a lot? I, I thought it sold my... actually really well. Yeah, that was my yeah. impression. Again, those are, quite well. those are numbers that I'm not, you know. My enjoyment of PlayStation VR, you know, is not dependent on on how well those things do. They cited Astrobot, Tetris Effect, Blood and Truth, Moss, Beat Saber, and RE7 as their main highly acclaimed titles. So I have well, to think, like, yeah, how? Your enjoyment of it wouldn't depend on the sales number, but their decision to have PlayStation 5 VR would be dependent on its success. Yeah. Ben, I don't know if you know this about me. Sales impact my emotions a lot <laughs> they impact you should be a stockbroker if when i'm playing a game like yeah you know story performance gameplay world design all those things are coming at me but if i don't know how many copies it sold in three days it's just not a complete experience so i actually am deeply connected to all these things hideaki nishino uh, the senior vice president of platform planning and management uh wrote a blog post uh, saying a next-gen VR system that enhances everything from resolution and field of view to tracking and input is going to be coming to the PlayStation 5, along with a new VR controller yeah, that will, quote, Which is cool, incorporate yeah. some of the key features found in the DualSense, end quote. Um, technically, two controllers, if it's the same. I don't know. There are some PlayStation games that you, some PSVR games you have to, like Moss is one of them. Like you, you, it is intended to be played with a DualShock. Um, but um, yeah, where's our, where's our hype level at? I always get bummed when I am playing a PlayStation VR game that requires move controllers because the my move controllers are never charged, and so like <laughs> yes, you have that right. moment where like I'm ready to play. Oh yeah, no, yeah. I'm not. <laughs> you have to have the forethought, yeah, to get all that yeah. ready. Yeah. yeah, Ben, that'll happen to me when I pick up uh, like what the NES and Super NES online stuff because of the Super NES controller and like. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll I'll use this and oh crap. Yeah. <laughs> Pro yeah. controller for an hour or so. <laughs> Dead forever. Uh, what's hype about this for me is, I mean, I'm I'm probably not going to get it because I literally just bought a Quest 2 like a week and a half ago, um, is that the Quest 2 
is maybe second best to the index right now mm -hmm. as far as VR goes, which is not bad for 300 bucks. Right. I think 399 for the the 256, which I think is the one I got, but um but that price point at this level of quality is much higher quality-wise than the OG PS4 or PSVR because the, the in my opinion the PSVR was not great like visual visually like the the screens weren't very good i would get motion sick from psvr and i don't usually mm. get motion sick from like i certainly don't on the index i did on the original rift um i would get motion sick um so that's the thing i'm, I'm hyped about is just like the progress of technology and like the fact that the quest 2 is at that price point um, and that and that has like internal processing stuff. So if this doesn't have independent processing stuff, it could be even cheaper um, if it if it requires the PS5, which I'm assuming it will. Um, this thing yeah. could come in at like 200 bucks or something, mm -hmm. like depending on how crazy the controller is. And that that's a good price point that might actually be able to get the ins install base high enough for some really great games to come out on this thing because i think right that's always the problem is just like it doesn't have enough volume to justify making like a lot of really good games like obviously we get some really great vr games but the problem you know. is the bots are buying up all the damn ps5s the bots are buying up all the damn ps5s and they'll probably buy out all the damn ps5 vrs oh, yeah <laughs> they probably will you're right um, they'll store them with all their 3080s <laughs> the uh yeah so I, I think to me that's the, one of the the lingering questions even though they didn't make it sound like it's the case is whether or not this thing would be playable without connecting to the ps5 right. um because i think that is a, a pretty smart feature of uh the oculus um which i don't think there's anything else on that level right that that can just be used Not standalone really. yeah so i mean they they there were forays into cell phone based right. vr but it would get so hot and i mean shockingly i prefer playing things on my quest 2 not connected to my computer yeah just because it's a little clunky to like the, the oculus link stuff kind of sucks <laughs> like it like steam vr like crashes like every third time yeah i had some weird um, issues when i was it's a touch using. unstable but there is there's a yeah. lot of stuff that doesn't work you know that is is intended for the rift you know that's just kind of how yeah. that architecture works um so i don't i don't know i don't I, I think sony really wants to make these games a big deal i don't see them doing some kind of like downgraded you know in terms of like oh this will only run on on you know just this one thing or you know uh, the exclusivity part of it is what I'm excited about. Of them, you know, throwing more money at at some, uh, you know, developers who I think still have. I think Moss even says like you the, you you finished the Moss and it's like see you next game. Like they're very clearly, you know, excited to to make more in the series and you know beats. Well, they, beats they added just more to the game over time. Yeah, I, I have one demand, I didn't know that. and that is more Astrobot VR. That is yes. my only demand. Oh, I guarantee. think that. I think that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in fact, if one I didn't one say it was a hard come packaged, if one doesn't come packaged in, I'd be kind of surprised. Right, uh, mm. RE8 having VR or something they haven't talked about. And that'll be interesting. Yeah, maybe, to see specifically um, where they want to invest. Maybe, um, maybe, uh, maybe Silent Hill. Maybe, mm. maybe Silent Hill. Maybe. <laughs> Man, a PT game in VR would would be too much. Like I could not, <laughs> could not handle it. <laughs> I couldn't play PT at our office by myself in the afternoon. <laughs> I was like, too much. <laughs> it's too damn scary being alone in this giant building. Um, the old office. I would totally play PT in the, the new old, office. The old, 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 old office. Old, old. Uh, Bogdan B, a patron of Easy Allies, uh, brought up RE8, said obviously we're going to get an Astrobot sequel. Uh, through Gran Turismo 7 out there, potentially. Yeah. Yeah. Um, could have some fun VR. Are there anything, uh, maybe like a Ratchet and Clank VR mode or something? Any other franchises? Oh, yeah. That Ratchet, Ratchet and Clank would be wonderful. Yeah, they could potentially do a, a full game because don't don't forget, before uh, Sony like purchased Insomniac, they were making a ton of VR stuff. Yes, so they have they've game, got some chops built up. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we were talking about it earlier, but one of the cool things about Crash Four is all the different characters that you can play as. You could definitely translate some of that into VR in a cool way. I think. 
Um, no Man's Sky seems like it'll like obviously get a PS5 VR update for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think you know the PlayStation VR was always held back by the age of the PlayStation 4 and the technology there, you correct. know, and trying yeah. to, you know, run that stuff at a good frame rate is one of the biggest challenges. Um, I do think they did a good job with the ergonomics. I think they did a bad job in relying on the move controllers yeah. <laughs> as part of how to make that cheaper. Um, Those are PS3 controllers, are they not? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah they're, they're super old. That's wild. So they they absolutely needed the new controllers. And so I'm, I'm hoping that we're getting to a point where VR controllers are going to be somewhat standardized and feel similar across all of these different platforms uh, because you know the ones that i've used so far you know they felt great nishino uh illustrated that there are three titles that people with who currently own playstation vr can be excited for two of these i had to remind myself what they were uh one is sniper elite vr which you can imagine sniper elite is a game that definitely lends itself to that after the fall after the fall that sounds that sounds kind of familiar. Doesn't it? I'm familiar. thinking of something else. It's from Vertigo December. Games. These are the people that made uh, um, Sun ah, Arizona Sunshine, uh, yep. which is a very oh. fun, very straightforward, uh, simple uh, zombie game that uh, has a, a wonderful length for a VR shooter, uh, and I enjoyed quite a bit. Um, and this is a four-player co-op. Um, it's it's tough because I imagine this game is extremely exciting, but like just a really crazy action game that has PlayStation VR level textures is just such a tough sell. You know, it's like, trust me, when you get in there, it's going to be really cool. But when you have that big monster reveal, it's like, whoa, that's, you know, something like Resistance 3 on, you know, PlayStation 3 looked a little more epic than that. Uh, and Humanity. Do we remember Humanity? Yo, yes, what? I, yeah, I remember Humanity. I do. Yeah. The, the Civ game? No, that's Humankind. Right. Okay, that's I was kind. definitely thinking of that's Humankind. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> humanity, humanity is the one where there's like... There's like a ton of people. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. I was I was thinking of humankind, but I do I remember humanity as well. I was also thinking humankind. Yeah. So it really <laughs> makes me wonder how you're going to be solving because what I love about the humanity trailers is they're like, eh, there's a lot of people anyway. Here's the release date. And you're just like, what's going? What am I doing? What is this game? And like, I think it. I think it's smart to actually make you wonder like how you play that. It's a, it's a good way to oh, advertise yeah. that, and especially just adding the VR elements. Like, am I just watching and smacking these people, or like, what am I? Am I moving blocks, or am I like pointing where they should go? or like um i don't know we will see Get do you PSVR. think do you think that they'll do an update to the astro bot that comes with the ps5 to just make that have a vr no experience? they'll do something very different yeah oh, okay because they really you know it's similar to how astro bot uh that you know that comes with it like they design to, to the, the features yeah. so yeah you're right. Okay. Whatever Tetris that, Effect 2, baby. Sure. Uh, the, another nice thing about PSVR, it's very cozy. It's very light. Very comfortable. It's mm-hmm. just nice. It's a little it's a little balloonish. It's a little bigger, like some of the, the other VR systems, a little more uh, compact. But as mm. such, it just kind of has a nice balance to it. And ca- can't you just see Astrobot hugging it? Can't you just see like the when they finally release like, the image of it? And he's like, I love this thing. Uh-huh. I think that will do well. And thank you, Sony, for still investing in VR because it is awesome. But... Um, I can understand. It does not make you as much money as other things do. Ben, last week BlizzCon Line happened. It did. I thought that Wait, was maybe Brad just a nickname, but it is it is BlizzCon Line. I, you go I to had their the website. Same problem. It's like you're really. <laughs> I love it. BlizzCon Line. <laughs> um, can, should I? Can I? Should I go through all of the things that happened? Or you? You before we went live called it the uh, the Diablo uh. two conference. Or just the Diablo well, conference. Well, okay, I'm, that's there's some bias there. I mean, I, I even said on the reaction, it's like, hey, the the thing I'm interested in here is the, is the Diablo stuff. Like, I think just, that's fair. A lot of these where, are just updates right to other things. Yeah, so that's the main reason. Same. I mean, even Overwatch two, they said they're like that's not happening for a while. Yeah, well, they didn't no, even have. They had an Overwatch two thing, but it wasn't, but it wasn't in, in the, the opening. Yeah, it wasn't in the keynote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sophia made me watch most of it, and I was just like. I just care about Diablo. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care about yeah. this. Well, I, I you mean, watched it, it, though, right? Yeah, oh, sure. I, I, can't, I can't speak for everybody, but the Diablo stuff was the stuff that got me excited. The rest of it was whatever. What is there to be excited about, Ben? About Boy. The Diablo franchise. A legendary game 
a majestic game, a game that they sing about in the heavens, Diablo 2, is and getting... in the hells. Yeah, I was going to say, and, well, yeah. <laughs> what? No. Oh, that's, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it is It is getting a remake, Diablo 2 Resurrection. Is it Resurrection? No. Resurrected. Resurrected. Ghosts and Goblins yeah. Resurrection. There it is. Diablo 2 Resurrected. There we go. Those Alien two Resurrection. Are... Right. <laughs> we don't talk about that. No. Hey, Alien Resurrection is great. Shut mm. up. <laughs> is it though? We'll, do, we'll, we'll cover it's that still. later. <laughs> okay. Anyway, Diablo 2 is getting a remake, Diablo 2 Resurrected. Um, is being worked on by some Vicarious Visions people. They're obviously, they've been building up a great and well-earned reputation for a lot of things. The It looks extremely faithful to Diablo 2, uh, while, of course, being updated, which is, I think, what everybody wants. You'll also be able to play it with the original graphics if you want, which is always a great feature. Yes. Um, and I think one of the most exciting things is, like, I want to play this game on PC, but I'm thrilled by the fact that, like, if I go on a trip or something, I can carry, it has cross-progression cross on my Switch, awesome. and I can just play it on my Switch, awesome. uh, which is nice. Um, and Blizzard already has a great track record of adapting Diablo 2 controller like they did with Diablo 3, so... I, I don't know how Diablo 2 is going to work yet. I haven't gotten my hands on it with controller, but I'm sure it, it will probably be fine. Uh, do you think Warcraft 3 Reforged is going to stunt the sales of Diablo 2? Oh, like I mean... Possible? <laughs> it's funny that you say that because there's two sides of this coin where in chat, right, and, and Brad and I expressed this as well, I feel like there was a lot of caution where they're like, I don't know, Warcraft, Reforged burned me, Reforged burned me. Like, I saw I saw a lot of people in chat being like, I don't know, man, I don't know. And I, that's, that's earned, right? Um, that people are right to be skeptical. However, sometimes when I feel like when you hear complaints about that, you have to wonder how deep that awareness is. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, I think Diablo 2 specifically means so much to so many people, but then you have... I think like just a shit ton of people that came in with Diablo three and just love Diablo through Diablo three that are like oh a new Diablo game on my Switch and so I, I guess on a, a like a broader more mainstream level I don't know how much it will affect them and I imagine <laughs> this game will sell like crazy. <laughs> well, and it's it, it and it speaks to because I mean like yeah I I Diablo two is like one of my favorites and growing up I'd played a lot I'd play with my dad yeah. like it, it's like a heritage game for me and it's like it's it's one of the pillars I think they even literally said this in the presentation yeah. but it's like it's one of the the foundational pillars of Blizzard and like the goodwill that Blizzard used to have that like I mean obviously got super eroded with the Hong Kong thing and like uh, the Wharf Warcraft thing and stuff, and it's just like it's the state Diablo of World of Warcraft 2, for many, you know, like right. But Diablo Two is just like so that game for so many people. Well, and that I think like no stain can, yeah. And and maybe maybe this is nostalgia speaking, but personally, I don't think it is. Like Diablo Two is, I believe, over twenty years old, right? And I, I feel like when you get into that territory, sometimes it's like. Okay, it was awesome at the time, but we've like learned so much since then. Like Diablo two still slaps, man. Like you can yeah. you can you can install that sucker right now and still have a great ass time with Diablo two. Well, it's, it's it's wild. Like Diablo two slaps so hard that like they had to change Diablo three to be to go backwards right. to be more like it to well, prove it and kind of. And it's it is funny when they're t you know like announcing Diablo four they're like we're really guys we're really inspired by Diablo two like you just yeah. you know <laughs> it's like, we're we know you like that one, one two, we know you uh, like that the number two that's the one not not three two okay three now is pretty sick but yeah yeah I like three a lot but I like yeah. three as well but uh, I think three when it came Diablo out was trash. <laughs> Um, but concerning Diablo 4, I'm very happy, you know, this past week that Blizzard showed me the class that I will be playing as. I was like, oh, thank you, Blizzard. Mm -hmm. This is nice. Yeah. yeah. I like mm -hmm. this. Um, I will be playing as the rogue. Um, how 
How many classes are there ever on average? Like three or four at launch? They've for revealed your average Diablo? Just for your average for, Diablo oh, for game. Each, like, what do well, you think? I mean, how many very, do you think it varies will quite have? a bit because, like, you just have three in Diablo 1, but then you have way more in Diablo 2. And well, then it always have... launches with, like, four or five, and then they add, mm, right, like, yeah. one or two or three later. Um, so my guess is for, if you look on the website, I think right now there's, like, a shadowy slot. So it's, like, it seems like they're probably going to have five. Because right now it's Druid, Barbarian, Rogue, and Sorceress. And there's, like, a spot open between, I think, Barbarian and Sorceress. Uh, Give so me knows? the goddamn Necromancer. That's yeah. Cool. <laughs> it, would, it would be cool if it was the Necro, because if you've got the Sorcerer, Sorceress, Wizard feels a little repetitious, and you've got Rogue, so Assassin feels a little repetitious. Well, I, I feel like Rogue is definitely giving off, like, demon you know, Hunter Demon Hunter vibes, vibes for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, I just want to be a goth boy, damn it. <laughs> so I'm going to be that sorceress for sure. Sorceress um, is, yeah. Chains of Domination is the uh, latest update that will be coming to World of Warcraft Shadowlands. Yeah, kinky, kinky title for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of kinky things going on. Some kinky franchises over there at Blizzard. Uh, it's right in, you know, playing to my heart. The Burning Crusade Classic servers are coming to WoW Classic. That's when I started. Right before Burning Crusade came out. Burning Never Crusade <laughs> was really special to me at the time um we can fly we can fly hearthstone is getting a new mode called mercenaries i'm all about new modes called mercenaries they generally work out for me i like franchises called mercenaries too uh, and a new expansion forged in the barrens um for those horde types overwatch 2 got some new details which they yeah i guess didn't they're like yeah it's not happening this year diablo 4 is not happening this year also right didn't they say like before blizzcon line oh it's it's happened. Blizzard, man. Dude, yeah. they don't know when Diablo 4 is happening. <laughs> it's like four years away. Talk about yeah. potentially changing up the, the core roles in Overwatch 2, but um, uh, so a l- more looks at the single-player campaign. Uh, and just in general, before we wrap up, Ben, how was like the online nature of it? Like You, you know, weren't mm. expecting, obviously, if they were going to do in person to attend BlizzCon, but uh, did anything... We were just focused on the opening ceremony. Were there any vibes that were different, or was it... Uh... Yeah, no, Brandon, that, that is a really great question. That is a very good question that you come up with. It was bad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Your, your uh, tone I, was setting something up. I knew it. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was. It was bad. Um, and I, I, like, I'm not even trying to be facetious, like, but I don't think it really has to do with the fact that it was, like, an online presentation. It was that the energy... Mm that they were giving off during the keynote was like, did a fax machine write this? Like it was just so corporate and stilted and awful. And like, I've definitely been to blizzard keynotes that have felt more passionate and human and like people worked on them. And uh, I think that just has to do with, with how, People have left Blizzard, and Blizzard has changed quite a bit over the years. But uh, it was it was stiff. It was a stiff presentation. Metallica crushed it. Blizzard Entertainment <laughs> Corporate stilted. Yeah. Awful. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, like, <laughs> it's on our business card. Yeah, it's like you know, everything you I don't mean, want Blizzard to be. That's the big fear. Oh, that's too bad. I I, I think they had cool stuff to show, but I, I think the way that they presented it needs some work. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I only kind of skimmed it to get the stuff on our channel, but to me, it just felt like there was too much, you know, grandstanding speeches and stuff for an online event. Like, it's it's one thing when you've got everybody together to kind of like just kind of to, to sort of talk it out or whatever. But like, man, when, when you're having people at home watching on their sh- screen, like you're competing with everything. Right. Like, at any moment, people can just like open another tab and wait for you to finish. <laughs> like, right. So <laughs> it's probably not a, a good idea to just stand up there for five minutes and talk about everything Blizzard and then introduce somebody else to start talking about Hearthstone as a franchise before they actually start getting into whatever they're going to announce. Ben, I forgot about that Metallica thing, man. 
That was yeah. it made me wonder like what's the worst track you could put on top of Metallica? <laughs> if you can't it can't be Metallica because they clearly weren't like, well, we should put some metal in here. It's like, no. Yeah. Because then people will wonder, is that what I'm listening to? So it's like, how do you find well, something that's not Metallica, hilarious. but not offensive, but not. <laughs> uh, well, and, and it's such a bummer. Like Metallica is my favorite band of all time and always will be. And, you know, clearly not a not a not a young band. <laughs> and yeah. they sounded so good. Like they, they had they had the right energy. On the actual BlizzCon on the blog actual, channel. On the, <laughs> yeah. If you were on, on, what on Twitch, Twitch or anywhere right. else. It sounded like a like a right, 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 like right. A I'm just saying RPG store <laughs> theme song. I'm saying that's a shame because they yes. actually sounded so good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So I'm trying to I'm trying to understand the logistics of it. So BlizzCon were they streaming like on their own player on their site? Is that where people could actually hear Metallica? I think. Or could people be on Twitch.tv slash BlizzCon and hear Metallica? <laughs> Maybe my memory's they... playing tricking me, but I feel like I was watching it on Twitch because that was the link Brad sent me. And during the live stream, I was hearing the actual music. But may- maybe they so went back. If that's back the and- case, that seems bizarre to me. That like one channel would be allowed, yeah. but like the official Twitch channel would not be. I don't know. Be. Yeah, the I'm not sure on the details. Legalities are just confusing. I mean, I guess if they're restreaming it, it would. But then, like, it's all on how Twitch. Does that not apply to everything else? Yeah, right. It's so weird. DMCA. Twitch is a mess. Yeah. With the- right. DMCA. <laughs> Napster. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> they, they don't, they, Metallica doesn't have a history at all with music licensing oh, yeah. and copyright. Oh, but not, no. oh, oh you know boy. the other part about that too. They're pretty uh, open Brandon. minded about those things. The, yeah, the oh, community yeah, manager anyway. that nobody in the world is following put out that tweet about rock and roll racing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, yeah, if you play uh, this game on stream, turn off the music. It's like, what? Blackthorn's super good. I got a soft spot for Lost Vikings. That's tempting. That's tempting to put some time into that, but I'm just like, I. I feel like I, I haven't played Lost Vikings, 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 Vikings in like. Lost Vikings is dope. I played the hell out of it. I was going to get it for Lost Vikings, so but then I was like 30 bucks or whatever. Nah, I was like, nah, nah. nah. nah, nah, nah for nah. three games? Nah. nah, nah, nah. This ain't it. Also, don't recommend putting any time to Anthem right now. It's a bad it's a bad time to put. There yeah. were better times. I had a good time at launch. Um, and they just needed to lean into the stuff that worked. Like, flying was fun. Nah, bro. They needed to cancel this game, and they did. Uh, I mean, yeah. Bioware's officially canceled Anthem. Um, it, it <laughs> From Christian Daly on the Bioware blog, in the spirit of transparency and closure, we wanted to share that we've made the difficult decision to stop our new development work on Anthem, a.k.a. Anthem Next. We will, however, continue to keep the Anthem live service running as, as it exists today. Not sure how long they're going to keep doing that. They're not going to develop so anything else for Anthem. Forever. For who? R- yeah, right. for what? You know. Um, I'm, j- I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's a tough. I'm sure, there are people that are playing. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure that there are people that are not happy to hear this. I'm sure that there have yeah. to be hundreds of people out there that are like, please, you know, like I, I hope this turns around. But there are dozens of us. Dozens. <laughs> but ah, oh, man, I'm so excited to get this news. I think this is such a great call, and for not only them to really hang on, you know, the what this means for the anthem community, what this means for the anthem developers, to jump right into. You know, like, I just, we're going to work on Dragon Age, we're going to work on Mass Effect, we're going to work on Old Republic. I just imagine that victory lap, not physically, obviously, because all of them are working from home, but, like, whenever they do get to work from home and they get to, like, walk through the halls of, like, hey, then there's the whole Dragon Age crew, like, come on in! You know, like, we're making this fun game. Well, and not only only that, but, and I forget where I was reading this, but, like, the thing I was reading was, like, this reminded them that like and the sales of Jedi Fallen Order reminded them that like single player RPGs still sell a lot they and like you don't sell. have to make everything mm-hmm, a, mm-hmm. a damn live service game and so like this like allowed them to make Dragon Age what it should have been in the first place that's again. the crazy like, thing to me is like everybody's happy nuts. because they're not turning it into the thing that no one had wanted they're making right. it the thing that everybody wanted <laughs> Well, it's just, it's just, e- it just, it's just EA up and down and backwards and forwards. It's yeah. just so funny. Like they only do things. Well, EA backwards is AE. <laughs> right, right. Which is inter- arts and entertainment 
Um, so like Ross Perot is in this, right? True. Um, not Ross Perot, Puro, Hercule Puro. <laughs> Never mind, I fucked up my own joke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that yeah, that was the follow up article that came out. I think today even uh, with the Dragon Age news, and it's just like, right. man, like you lost one of like your best players at the studio over this dumb argument of trying to make Dragon Age something that like nobody wants it to be. Right, and they were wrong. Like, and and now that the sales numbers have borne out that they were wrong, they're just gonna go back on it. But that person still quit. Like, they're still gone. This can make us like, money. Oh. Okay, we do. Right. Okay. Well, then, but then it like it makes you just wonder. Like, I mean, is it the Star Wars license that let them try to make Fallen Order a single player thing in the first place? Because like, what about that? is more powerful to convince them to make a single player RPG than a new fucking Dragon Age game a, a new entry in a successful line of single player RPGs but it can be like more what are you doing but we can make more money right that's yes. the Dude, thing is it, they're FIFA, trying to FIFA chase, clouds, chase the magic dollars yeah FIFA clouds yeah. their their mind FIFA clouds their minds for sure it's but it's oh so my God. it's so strange to come like after Anthem to be excited about what that means for Dragon Age to come after you know Andromeda you know and their the difficulties to be excited about the next Mass Effect like um, you don't want bad things to happen but then you know when the when the fire when the forest burns down it grows back <laughs> well, yeah but what, what, and what also oh just real quick what also sucks about this is like Anthem was a new IP yeah and like it got hosed and. New IP happens maybe more frequently in, in video gaming than it does in film, but, like, it, it's like a Tron Legacy situation, I feel like, where it's like, this could have been sweet, and it's a new IP, but it's gone. It's over. Well, I think the depressing thing, Ian, is Anthem is new IP, but it didn't feel new. Like Yeah, it felt it like felt Destiny like, with flying. Yeah, it felt like regurgitated. I mean, not everything, right? Like, I'm... Right. It's not being totally fair, but, like... I'm glad that they're taking this direction, but I'm not at the point where I can be excited yet. I just feel like the point we're at now is like, okay, now this could be cool, but doesn't yeah. necessarily mean that it will. I just hope that somewhere in the middle of all this, it also convinced them to destroy Frostbite. Yes, dude. Like, yes. Do not use Frostbite well, then, yeah. for this Dragon Age game. All these game. things seem to... It just yeah. lately, Bioware seems to have been on like an upward trajectory, which has made me feel good. And this, even though this is technically a negative announcement, I, this writing was on the wall. Like, I'd be very surprised yeah. if they were like, all right, we had a meeting. Anthem next is going to be twice the budget than we thought before. Like, that was not the reaction I was expecting. Um, and so I, uh, I think all of this is... All this is good news. I thought I re these are kind of old. I thought I remembered hearing that Dragon Age was switching to Unreal, but according to these articles from 2019, this one says EA has not learned from Anthem. Dragon Age 4 is not going to switch to Unreal. So I mean that's old. So who knows? But yeah, but I mean the, I, yeah. I think the thing is is it just seems that the team now is excited. Yes, is, is the vibe that yeah. I got from that it's story. A good thing like, to we bring can up, actually but... make what we want to make, what we're good at making. So that Which is Which also good news. means that these games are even farther out than yeah. <laughs> than we thought. You have to rip out a whole design aspect of your game. It's going to yeah. take a while. Guess I'll just keep playing Monster Hunter Rise. More time to finish Inquisition. Ooh. Never finished it. Got to wrap it up. Also this week, Ian, talking about games that are really far off. Vampire the Masquerade 2 Bloodlines just changed developers, man. They were yeah. like <laughs> two two of like the top tier like creative people at the team left and now they're the developers gone. <laughs> and they they were like we're going to give it to these new people. They're like we're going to find people. <laughs> they're going to make the game we want them the way that we want them to make it. And their announcement it's was very much in line with the two other people earlier leaving that was like we honor them, but they're out. <laughs> but they're gone. <laughs> well, it's it's uh, weird. Bloodlines two has always been a weird one for me because I love Bloodlines. Um, that game when it came out was kind of rough, mm -hmm. and so like, I've 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 been trepidatiously excited for Bloodlines two. And like when they announced it and said that it was coming out that year, 
or the next early the next year i was just like not a chance in hell is this coming <laughs> like no way especially not with like the stuff that you are saying is going to be in this game so i'm not surprised in the slightest that this has happened i just hope i mean what i always hope that the game turns out cool uh who the hell knows, man? This this is a roller coaster. This damn game. It seems like a lot of work has been done. I would love to love to meet these characters I've seen in these trailers. I'd love to yeah. go through that world. Ah, fingers crossed. Uh, Days Gone's coming to PC. You are either happy about that or mad, depending I, on who you are. Sure not, Bloodborne. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm happy about it, but I <laughs> I literally just played through it, yeah. and like if I had waited a little bit longer, I could have played the PC version. Uh, there's a live action Twisted Metal TV series in the works. Is there a twisted metal live game action. in the works? Yeah, I'm pumped. Craziness. I'm pumped. I've, I've wanted live action twisted metal for a long time. You do the race in the oh. first episode. You do the race in the last episode, and then a different racer for each of the episodes leading up. You got to build up to the race for the last episode. If you put it in the first one, so you can see what it's like. So, wow, look but at all twisted that. Twisted metal is not racing, though. Or the tournament, you know, like that's well, the, yeah. the the event. Yeah. I think they'll pepper in combat throughout. Oh, sure. But it's cheaper to do it your way. So but yeah, I just yeah, yeah, introduce all those will characters. Will David Jaffe right? make a cameo? We'll see. Is Will Vin hmm. Diesel be in it? We'll see. I don't Man, think he's show, involved, but yeah, it'll be interesting. This could be either... I feel like it'll either be completely badass and sweet or like the cheesiest, dumbest thing ever. Sweet too. Oh, it'll be both. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that by the time I'm ready to talk about Fortnite's newest crossover the next one's already like being teased it's like already spoiled so like I'll just say this one Street Fighter is in Fortnite there have been teases of other things but I'll just say Street Fighter um, oh wait it wasn't officially announced that the other thing no. I thought that was real no I mean oh. it looks real fingers crossed but I don't know in case you don't like to know those things for Fortnite, I'll keep it out. Yeah, we won't uh, say. An N64 version of Dinosaur Planet, which became Star Fox Adventures on GameCube, leaked online. Bloodworth watched the Very. first hour or so of it, and I watched a lot. Yeah, a, a quite a bit of it. It's it's pretty cool, you know. It, and and to refresh people who are not like up to speed on this weird development story, so basically, Rare was making this basically Zelda action adventure type game called Dinosaur Planet. Nintendo came over and they're like, oh, that character looks like Fox McCloud. Make it a Star Fox game. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just like probably okay. ruined the game from the get go. Um, and so, and then it eventually took so long that they scrapped development, rebooted it for GameCube, and it released as a GameCube game called Star Fox Adventures. What's crazy with this N64 build is it's this crazy like in between part of this process so the original game was still there you start off playing as crystal and then you get to like the the i think they're called swap stone or whatever it's like this big rock monster and that's where you go to switch characters essentially and they're like now we're going to move over to Saber's story. And Saber's story starts up. It's like, hi, I'm Fox McCloud. And so it's like, they, wait, wait. some characters refer to him as Saber, but then when he actually shows up, it's Fox McCloud. And so Fox they McSaber. hadn't finished all this stuff yet. Are you telling me that Dinosaur Planet is another goddamn fake game? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> what? The audience will get it. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was, it was interesting. Uh, Tricky was in there with like, his abilities and stuff um but it you know and then uh some people were running out on emulator uh john lineman from uh digital foundry was actually like running it on an n64 so you could get it in all its blurry glory mm. um but yeah it's a it's a cool thing to see it's, it's a good month for 64 games that then came out on later consoles it's a good month rare <laughs> games yeah we get to particular that are leaking yeah rare's having a good or good or bad month because all this stuff is leaking Notre Dame is pulling out of EA Sports until they finalize new rules on how much players get paid. Just Notre Dame, man. Notre Dame's putting their foot down. You're going to bring back college football. Pay up. Paid. Very paid curious to see how game? that goes. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Paid. Well, just they want to cut that college football game. Uh, they want, yeah, get, get those players some money. Stadia developers can't fix bugs in their own games because Google fired them. You know. That's a headline. We're not, not super surprised about that, but that sucks. Uh, GDC dropped their plans for an in-person event in 2021, which technically we could have reported last week. I didn't because I was I'm surprised they were even trying to do that. that. That didn't seem very super shocking well, to I, me. 
if you recall on this very podcast when they announced that bloodworth and i were both like yeah that's not, not a chance yeah. that's not happening <laughs> that's ridiculous uh q games revealed pixel junk raiders uh, which is exclusive to Stadia, and I know we like to make fun of Stadia. It's coming on March first. This game is my jam. This is, mm-hmm. oh man, you hop it around and smacking dudes in an open world, and oh boy, really? yeah. I love Pixel Junk, but then halfway through that headline, I saw Stadia, and then literally my brain forgot it. <laughs> 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 so I didn't oh, look at the the footage. Works Must Die Three was uh, exclusive to Stadia, and I was happy to play it on there and enjoyed it. Um, yeah. Stadia biz dev, some, not that great. But once you actually get the game on Stadia, it works well. It does some get, weird thing with the, the state sharing mm-hmm. to where, like, you basically, like, if you share the link to your game to somebody else, then they, like, pop into your world and assist you. I don't exactly understand You'll how You'll get, it like, works. in-game boost. Sounds very Amiibo-ish, but we'll see how specifically that works. Magic the Gathering has been busy. They're launching Secret Layer Black as Magic, which is a new set focusing on equity and inclusion that began development, yeah. I believe... Uh, Beginning of last summer, during the Black Lives Matter movement, they brought some new people on. This is the fruits of their labor. They're also releasing Strixhaven, which I wanted to buy, but it doesn't come out to the end of April, um, which is a, a magic school. And they're also allegedly doing Warhammer 40K and Lord of the Rings expansions. Looks This dope. is yeah. all awesome. That's great. Go magic. Yeah. Everything about that is great. Uh, Gran Turismo 7 has been delayed to 2022, citing COVID-related issues. Not too much of a surprise there. Nope. Gran Turismo has been delayed as like one of the most natural right. gaming sentences you can <laughs> <I'm> write. Not, <laughs> I don't expect much from Gran Turismo in terms of uh, hitting. Oh, do we have a running bet on which of those games is going to come out first? I can't remember. Which I feel Gran like there's a conversation about it at least. Uh, Gran Turismo game? or the Forza Motorsport. Oh. Somebody will let us know. Bandai Namco bought a minority of their stake in the developers of Tropico 6, aka Olympic Entertainment, who. Uh, Blood, you said that they are already working on two games for Bandai Namco. Two so. franchises, two yeah. Franchises. They announced them there. Cool, cool. Tropical 6 is cool. Henry Cavill thought he was being cute, uh, showed some pictures of a script he's working on. What could this be? And people, like, unfocused, un, you know, blurred the image and focused in and saw many terms from the Mass Effect series. So, uh, apparently Henry Cavill is going to be in a Mass Effect movie. A feature film? If you can believe him. Apparently, according, according to maybe him. I don't know. He might just be in a script meeting. Maybe it'll get canceled. We'll see. Um, upgrading to the PS5 and Xbox Series XS version of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 will cost you 10 bucks um, Cyberpunk 2077 yeah patch 1.2 has been delayed following the recent cyber attack GameStop CFO's uh, GameStop's CFO Jim Bell will leave the company at the end of March and then apparently they're going to hire a new one <laughs> and that's boy that's going to be an interesting search uh, Bloodborne producer Masaki Yamagawa is leaving Sony's Tokyo-based Japan Studio. Uh, actually, reports coming out of Japan Studio, just that a lot of stuff on that end is going to slow down. Um, mm-hmm. which, uh, a, a lot it's a little concerning. Not. I don't yeah. know the details, but yeah. Um, waiting to hear more about that. And uh, some terrible news to report, but stuff that we need to be aware that is uh, happening, sadly. Soul, a female Call of Duty mobile esports player, has reportedly been murdered by a male player named Flashlight in Sao Paulo, Brazil. This was a very premeditated event. Very terrible. Not a not a Call of Duty esports player that I was aware of. Um, but a terrible thing to have happened. So, need to know that, that things are happening. Need to know that people uh, are in danger. And that is not something that we want to have happen. On the opposite end of that, it is time for love and respect. Love, Love and respect. respect. From Alexander Zirianov. He starts the Q&As. He starts Love and Respect. Ben, he's all over the place. This is too good, though. And this is something this is an, an ex- something that he's really cornered the market on that I feel every time he brings this to the podcast, we absolutely have to do it. Hello, Allies. This week, Easy Allies has reached the milestone of 300 reviews. By the way, everyone on the panel has worked on the most recent entry, Persona 5 Strikers. Hey! Mm-hmm. Nice. To celebrate this occasion, I've once again picked words and phrases that are only used by a single ally oh. across oh, all wow. Easy A reviews. Just like last time, you must guess which ally owns each signature phrase. Um, there are a lot of these. They're too good. I got to go through all of these. If you want, if you're on the panel or you are curious, I can list what games that they are from. That might make this go a little bit longer than it needs to, but uh, these are just too much damn fun. All right. So I'm going to say a word or a phrase. You have to tell me which reviewer used that exclusively. No one else at Easy Allies used that. 
who used the word commendable in 12 reviews? Commendable. Damiani? Brad. I've used commendable. <laughs> yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I love when the person's on and they're like, yeah, that's... Uh, that's me. One of these is definitely me. I just saw the word and I'm like, oh yeah, I need to I need to curb that. <laughs> I've written that for. Is it canister? No, no it's not canisters. <laughs> but I, you know, maybe have done more canisters. How about nonetheless? That's me. That's also Ben. Ten reviews. Ah. Uh, nonetheless. I've never used it though. Apparently not. Interesting. <laughs> but because. It's only one ally that trades in, but because. I feel like I've also That's used but because. That's you, Ben. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Are these all Ben? The strings. No, no, the we'll chain. get some other people. Uh, unlocks additional. That's Huber. That's Huber. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's definitely Huber. Yeah. The one you thing I have to, I don't want to throw stuff. anybody under the bus, but sometimes I have to, like, curb, somehow there would, like, be, like, adds additional additions or something like that will we'll sneak in and i'm like what what just happened here <laughs> let's reconfigure this <laughs> this one i think i could call out of its way out of this, its way this is me for sure <laughs> yeah, yeah i use it I, I use this one a lot for sure a lot of really good games on that list yeah half-life alex marvel vs. capcom infinite yakuza like a dragon paper mario origami king in search of in search of Something blood of, no one else does that it's not uh, huber maybe in, that is huber michael huber mm. in search mm. of in eight reviews in search of bonds in search of assassin's creed valhalla i put that in an amazing I'm, like tempted to use these now that i hear them damiani? An amazing michael damiani is an amazing i feel like that. i've used an amazing really huh mm -hmm. okay we'll go back to that are only that are used only by a single ally across all Easy A reviews. All right, that's yeah. wild. It, that is extremely wild. But he's Ingram. combining. He's 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 not doing single words. These are like, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. Well, nonetheless, was pretty fun. And commendable, commendable. You just mm -hmm. play games that are commendable, Ben. Move from. Move from. Brandon. That seems like a Huber. Tis neither a Brandon nor a Huber. Brad? Tis a Brad. A Brad. A Bradism. Courtesy of. Courtesy of. Huber's my friend. That does feel like a Huber or a Brad. Way to put it. That's Damiani. Damiani. Yeah. I was going to say Damiani is my next It's guess. definitely not me. Feo yeah. was one of those reviews. Star Fox Zero. Ukulele in the Impossible Lair. Hmm. Capturing the spirit of. This can't is can't believe event. none of us have... Written that. I, I feel like I've I've said that. Capturing you might have said captures the spirit of. Capturing oh, okay. the spirit of. Is that passive voice? Yeah. Is that Huber? It's Brad. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Can be used offensively. That's a Ben <laughs> joint for sure. <laughs> uh, really? Who, who likes to use things offensively? That's Huber. Huber? Huber? Yeah. Yeah. Aid you in. A I D U N aid you in not Damiani mm. trickier ones are, are, are Brad capturing the uh. spirit of move from how about <laughs> well you move from <laughs> would probably also be Brad um, yearning yearning just the word yearning just the word yearning uh, Huber writes from emotional I places I feel like Huber yeah. yeah Damiani Damiani oh. yeah Damiani gets poetic, yeah. That was in Immortals Phoenix Rising and Breath of the Wild. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lots of yearning going on in both of those games. Integral. I could probably call <laughs> this one, too. Is that you, Joe? Integral. Or integral. Yeah. I think Huber pronounces it integral. I don't know. Yeah. It could be both, I guess. So that's Huber? That's Huber. Five times. For Honor. Most recently in Zombie Army 4, Dead War. Addresses. There's a lot it's of only one person that says addresses? Only one ally who says addresses. Damiani? Damiani. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I I could have sworn I've said addresses. Addresses, though. You know, like they yeah. address this yeah. issue, but yeah, yeah, specifically yeah. addresses. Yeah. Okay. 
to goof. <laughs> Brad. Jones? Kyle. That's me. It's Jones. Kyle. <laughs> I definitely say, like, goof off. I'm like, you can just, uh, you know, you get this item, and then you can just go goof off. <laughs> That's open As world reviews. Crackdown 3, Just Cause 4. Yeah, those are those, are those goof yeah. games I talk about. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, to goof. To paint. Bloodworth. I, I definitely Bloodworth. say paint a lot, but <laughs> to paint, not too not What is the paint. context of that? Like to paint a picture or something. I don't know. Yeah, I, I use that phrase a lot too. Kirby Star Allies, Splatoon 2, Witcher 3, and oh, specifically I mean, Blood and Wine and Trailblazers. I mean, Splatoon, you like, said. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Splatoon and Trailblazers, <laughs> that's a mechanic yeah. that you right. do. Yeah. You like multiple. Yeah. 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 Blood and Wine to paint. The trouble is. The trouble is. Now we're getting that's, to it. That's Finally, me. the trouble is. Feels like a Huber. That's but me. Could Neither. Be bad. Me. That's you, blood. The trouble oh, is. Oh, bloody baby. Yep. Ages of mayhem. Some or something. I don't know. Yeah, twin mirror. Trouble is. Yeah. Make your way through. You make your way through. Only three reviews is bad. If this is not me, I don't understand anymore. Like this has. These to are be tough. Bad. Yeah. You think you've got command. Of all of them words, but we, we no. use them sometimes too, Ben. <laughs> no, I'm not saying I have command. It's just like I write so many scripts that these sound so familiar. It's true. Ben, I mean, I know everybody's through. quirks and that, stuff, and I still don't have any advantage in this game. Yeah, that feels like a blood, maybe. Make your way through. That's me. Ah. Marvel Spider Man Steep and Super Hot I've, Mind Control Delete. I've written Make Your Way Through. I know I have. You literally haven't, apparently. Oh yeah. my god. <laughs> Sorry. Or it got edited. You gotta search for yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. the other trick. Yeah, Bloodworth took it out. New places. What? New places. Only one person has ever said the words new places. <laughs> Huber. I give up Huber. guessing in this game anymore. Huber. Me. Uh, okay. To, to work out. To work out. Three reviews. Huber? Talking about actually working out? Brad. That's you, blood. Okay. To find the best. To find the best ever was bloodworth that is bloodworth and finally <laughs> in three reviews hello <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> when would that ever come up hello. wait i can give you i can give hello you games no man's sky for sure yep mm -hmm. but no that was gt wasn't it no 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 man's sky yes, was easy ben. oh was it oh it's me. Uh, oh. It was in Days Gone, Far Cry 5, and Gears of War 4. I think in Days Gone, I'd say, like, you'd, you would go to a base just to say hello to people and pick up equipment or something. In Far Cry 5, uh. I think I was referencing your partner saying hello to each other. They would recognize and be like, oh, I know that person that, you know, in the lore. That, that is such a different vibe than when you just say hello. Yeah. Hello. 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 <laughs> right. <laughs> Alexander, that is so bizarre and so strange. And we that have, was fun. I and we uh, have potential longer. issues. With I'm sorry. I guess that all of them are me, but they. I really don't felt understand like they the were. spreadsheet he has to use to make I know. that even possible. Yeah. How did you? I think last time didn't he explain that he there like, was like an made, app he, like, he used or something. something? Yeah. He is, there's some it? AI somewhere that's like oh, that's right, allies. He does, like, programming <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Watch every yeah, review. Yeah. Process all dialogue. Okay. From Craig O'Shea, hello allies. Playing through Mario 3D World on Switch and the Uncharted games on PS4 recently has reminded me of my appreciation for well-implemented linear game design. As mm -hmm. I see it, the main benefits of such design are tightly woven pre-planned gameplay experiences where the player's abilities and the difficulty curve can be taken into account, avoiding scenarios where the player feels their level or their experience does not match the challenge. In a time where exciting huge open world games with similar content repeated across a large map are so popular, what franchises, if any, would you like to see take a more linear approach with similar gameplay mechanics where whether in a mainline game or spin-off love and respect craig not ironically ghost recon <laughs> that's like I should get back to that as much as i love the last two or played a lot of the last two hmm. more linear i i don't know if i can break it down that simply because there was definitely a, a period i feel like in the PS2 days and maybe like the early 360 PS3 era where like linear was used as as an insult which right is silly um they could they could both be good it just depends on what the vision for the game is so like i don't know that i would want 
necessarily be like, okay, definitely make this linear because it would be better. It just depends on what the ideas are underpinning that decision. I don't know. Yeah, I'm trying to think of something that feels like it would make most sense, but not off the top of my head. It's not coming to me. Well, it's it's weird because the games that are linear that are good are like, they just are that, you know? They're like a good story or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like, I could see them putting, it would be totally anathema to what it is now, but, like, for some reason, the one that comes to mind is, like, if they did a linear Hitman game that's, like, really story focused and gives us like that story and you go through you know that could be interesting i don't but know but is that even hitman anymore like as i think well, it, right it would like, be like a special side thing sure you know? yeah i get you i get you i would dig a more like horror focused survival based horizon spinoff could be fun sure oh, okay i think cool. that's good maybe not her you know maybe you're not better Eloy, at this. but just another character sure. and, and, <laughs> yeah. you know you're, you're building your weapons as you go through you have resources and you're like should i make three explosive arrows or 20 sharp arrows uh you know that'd be fun. well i think that's i think you you're on to something here with like changing the genre a little of the original game yeah because that yeah. that kind of just makes it feel more justified mm -hmm. that's good so what i want is a hitman game that's linear where you play as a maid and you're just living your life and then all of a sudden agent 47 comes through and like kills everyone in your mansion <laughs> except you <laughs> and then the rest of it you're dealing with the cops uh that yeah that'd be sick for matt current well blood you were doing research did you come up with anything you actually had a no. i don't i don't really know all right just think just trying to get jog my memories thanks jog a lot my ideas Matt Curran, what's up, allies? I had a couple ideas for some spin-offs for some existing yeah. game franchises, speaking of, some of which I think are fun and interesting. Clearly hate some of these. And some are pretty absurd. It will almost certainly never come to fruition. And I want to know what you guys think of them. If you like the idea, then spin it into something fun. Or if you think it doesn't have a shot, off it. Love and respect, Matt Curran, a.k.a. Hikar W. So spin it or off it. An NBA 2K spin-off where you play as a referee intentionally trying to fix games for the mob. Yo. Whoa. Spin it. Spin yeah, it. that's pretty good. Great. That's pretty good. Uh, a Last of Us spinoff where your goal is to unite all of the giraffes stranded from zoos in the U.S. and save the species. Off oh, now. Yeah. No, I'm spinning that. <laughs> I, I like, uh, yeah, save the giraffes. Of course. Spin. Spin and win. <laughs> a, spin and win. A Donkey Kong slash rock band crossover where the DK family band played by you and your friends with DK themed peripheral instruments attempt to go touring and become the top band of the country. Off it. Spin it. Off Didn't it. they do the, the drumming? We can't, we can't right? stream any music games Ricky anymore. Can oh, yeah, you were true. done. That's true. I don't, I don't need you, any more plastic <laughs> peripherals. And if you That's can't true. stream it, that. what's the point? <laughs> A 2D Mario game with asymmetrical multiplayer, where one player attempts to set up a gauntlet of enemies in a level and can even control some enemies in order to stop up the uh, stop the four players, up to four players yeah. specifically. I don't think that's a bad idea, but you kind of get that with Mario 35. Mm -hmm. And Mario Maker, sort of. Yeah. It's not like real time. But spin maybe it if you, for sure. Yeah, spin it. It's uh, yeah, some tweaks. Yeah, maybe, but, sure, yeah. sure, 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 sure. We have maybe, notes. Maybe don't spin. need four players on the other side. Maybe you play as Bowser somehow. Well, yeah, I'm shocked. Bow the, the word Bowser is not in the sentence somewhere. It's yeah, like, you know, some character from the who has dungeons from the Mario world. It could be anybody. Um, could be anybody. A monster hunter survival game where you attempt to colonize new lands and build up a settlement while fighting back the monsters. That's Monster Hunter. I think they mean like. I think they mean like. <laughs> you or Monster Hunter town. stories, maybe even. Yeah. What's you that? Leave town in the beginning, and then you're just continuously like you can't go back. I think you're like starting from scratch. I think it's more of like a simulation, yeah. like strategy type thing. Oh, either way, I in, mean, I mean, a, a Monster Hunter strategy game would be interesting. Like, sure, like building buildings and, and managing resources and stuff. Yeah, sure, spin it. Nice. It's just funny because that, that sentence to me is like, yeah, that's, that is the... <laughs> <laughs> You're not fighting back the monsters. You're murdering them. A Star Wars simulation game where you attempt to efficiently run all the systems of the under-construction Death Star. 
<laughs> and then <laughs> die. <laughs> Sorry, I was still thinking about Monster Hunter. Run that by me again. A Star Wars simulation game where you attempt to efficiently run all the systems of the under-construction Death Star. Yeah, I, I'm it. in. Sure. Oh, yeah, it. I, yeah. I, I like that. that. For sure. A Metal Gear spinoff where you play as a nameless group of soldiers who get transported to an alternate dimension and attempt to fight off hordes of zombies with generic survival mechanics. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's, uh, that already yep. exists. Yep. <laughs> I get it. From Parasite Paladin, what was the first gaming system that used cartridges and a microprocessor? Was it the and FM a microprocessor. and a microprocessor? Okay. Was it the FM Towns, Action Max, Fairchild Channel F, Supervision Eight Thousand, Compact Vision TV Boy? <laughs> Channel F, baby. I'm gonna be honest. I don't know anything about any of those machines. <laughs> Never heard of any of those. <laughs> Ian, you're right. <laughs> it's the, the Fairchild <laughs> Channel F, who I hope Morgan Fairchild made, you know, just in her own, like in her garage. And she's just like, here's my console. Um, just trying to bring that Morgan Fairchild humor to the podcast. Uh, they, these are all real, apparently. The FM Towns, the Action Max. What, nobody suggested they weren't real. The Supervision. I'm suggesting it right now. The Supervision 8000, that totally sounds like a fake console. And the Compact Vision TV Boy. I wonder how many TV boys TV there were. Boy, Compact dude. Vision TV Boy does not sound real. <laughs> Get oh, out of here. They're trying to capitalize TV on Game Boy. Boy for sure. Oh, no, it's before that. Oh, yeah, I suppose it would be much before that. It is time for bets. Next week's bet, Maquette, launches on March 2nd for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. Sony, with their PlayStation games, loves those launch trailers. How long will the launch trailer be for Maquette? If there is no launch trailer, which I highly doubt there will not be, uh, lowest time takes the win. Ian, I who's about to break minute, into song? One minute and 12 seconds. Damn, that's a It's on time. there. You can't see it. All right, all right. Ben. I said oh. uh, one minute, 20 seconds. Ooh, blood. I said one minute and six seconds. Yes, <laughs> And I got the long Damn one. It, yeah, Wilbur. if that's a two-minute trailer, we win, baby. One minute, 20. Oh. That's the way sandwich does. Be ben, I was like, 120. 121. And I'm <laughs> glad that we did. I'm glad I gotta we start did. thinking like that. Because I'm always like, what yeah. is it most likely to be, not what will win me the bet? Looking at these scores, there's nothing that you jovial penguins need to change about your thinking at all. Last week's bet, Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection, launched today, February 25th. Before we started this podcast, I started a game on the default difficulty setting and immediately walked to the right. How long did I survive? I'm not, I don't even know if I'm going to put this clip at the end of the podcast. We usually do for segments like this. You should. It's pretty. You should it's, still just for our not, reactions. It's, it's not even worth. It's not just even worth showing, man. Because, hey, I don't know if all of you listening to this podcast have played the game. I hadn't at that point. None of us at these allies had. Little did we know. No, Ben had. At, but when I made this oh, bet... Oh, when we made the bets. When we made the bets, yeah. No, no, no I hadn't played... Yeah, I couldn't. Right. I couldn't. It wasn't out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, did we know that there's a tombstone right there that you have to jump over before anyone attacks you. And th this has happened in previous Goats and Goblin games. I'm familiar with, the, uh, you know, a tombstone or two, but there's going to be something that's jumping or, you know, something coming up out of the ground at you. No, you could run at that thing forever. So... Well, for six go and a half Going minutes. up in terms of time... Daniel Blubber bet four seconds. I bet ten seconds. Brad Ellis bet fifteen seconds. Ben Moore bet twenty-five seconds. We had <laughs> six minutes and thirteen seconds left to go on the timer of that level before we, you know, said finally called it. So Ben, you took the win. Cool. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. Bringing cool. our scores to Jovial Penguin seven. I was their number one son, and they treated me like number two. Was that a poop joke? I think it is a poop. It's, it's what they call a double entendre, Jones. Vociferous beavers, two. <laughs> nom, 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 nom. Speaking of number two, <laughs> let me tell you about patreon.com slash easy allies. Ian, last week I told hey. him about that fast and loose. <gasps> yeah, and it's up now. You can go check it out. I used this filter for almost the whole thing. Yes. Whoa. <laughs> and it's a really good filter. There was <laughs> like points. You look like a like, sim. Yeah, there were points. Yep. Thank you. It's like a uh, Disney princess slash sim. And there were points where you were like, make, you were like getting kind of emotional and you were like scratching your eye. And it was just it's like yeah. watching Rapunzel, like tell like an emotional story. Uh, some of you were just listening to it. You sim, the that. Sims are 21 now. You made me, nice. Wow. You made me download this uh, 
I don't know when I'll get to implement those filters. I was, I was goofing around with them a little bit, but I was like, all right, that looks too damn good. I got to download. You got this. snap camera. But I want to see. Are, I want to see your. I, it didn't your, work. It wasn't. I think I. Had, I think I had to like restart my computer, which I haven't done yet. You so. have to start it before your camera sometimes too. Gotcha. All right. Well, hey. After we're done here, Ian, set up another Zoom call, and you and I will will spend hours. We'll just go through them okay, all. Yeah, we'll have. I, a great I old certainly time. don't have a Monster Hunter Rise video to cut. But that <laughs> is that is exclusive to Patreon.com. We got a lot of things that are exclusive to Patreon.com. You can get some stuff early. You get this podcast two days early. Every Monday morning, I do a show called Cup of Jones. Uh, sometimes, most of the time, I do it live. I've had some internet issues where I've had to pre-record Cup of Jones. Uh, but that is a fun update that I do um, where I answer people's questions. I do an editorial and I do a quick little update on what we've done the previous week and what we're planning to do that week. Uh, it's just a fun behind-the-scenes thing if you would like to uh, query about some things here at Easy Allies or if you would like to know about stuff that we are doing beforehand or maybe uh not miss out on some things that you might miss otherwise the significance behind them uh monday mornings 10 a.m pacific time me baby me um now it's time to turn our gaze outward and focus on the people at our shout out here for the last time for the last podcast of the month i'm going to shout out people at our very tip top tier oh, patreon.com just for the month just for the month yeah i was like did we these are our february this? tiers <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> wink, 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 all of these people are going to be coming back in March. Maybe some new people, we'll see. Uh, but for February, these have been our lovely shout-outers. Uh, Ian, you're going to go first. I'm going after you. Blood, you're going after me. And Ben, you are going after Bloodworth. Shout-out to Caleb Togi Crawford, El Thanis, Greg the Dark Knight Kettering, Dougie B, Stephen Thomason, and Nick. Shout-out. 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 Ben. Good bet in there, sir. You won. You get to promote any Easy Allies video you'd like to promote. You get the final word on anything you disagreed with, want to reiterate, or just popped into your head. And you get to sign off with your trademark sign-off. Okay. Uh, promoting video. The Zelda 1 video that I did with Blood and Brad mm. and Damiani was absolutely wonderful. I had so much fun shooting it. I think it's really good vibes uh, throughout I'd check that out if, if you want a good, chill time. Um, final word. Just don't fuck up Silent Hill. I know you're going <laughs> to put out another one. Don't don't fuck it up. Thank you. Um, Sophie is our supreme ruler. I just want to be a goth boy, damn it. I wonder what that is, Daboot. Rolling what? I am starting on the default difficulty, which was Legend. They It started us on Legend, so. Oh. oh. Two hits, baby. Yeah. <laughs> That's all you get. Oh my gosh. Okay. This, this game is hard as balls. And you're just holding right. I'm holding correct? right. And it's how long to die until you die. How long until the character begins moving? Yeah. yeah. Here it is. Right, right at one minute on the timer, basically. Oh man, it's just giving it to you. Oh, oh no! You can't. Yeah, you have to jump. Oh over no! That. How is it possible? You have to jump over that thing. Yeah, you have to jump over it. So, I mean, like, this is going to go on forever. Yeah, that's... Well, it's going to go for six minutes for, yeah, and 37 seconds. Yeah, it'll go seconds. for six... Yeah, you're right. The timer. <laughs> that's but a long timer. But you never know. Yeah, they're giving you a long time. I feel like I do actually know. <laughs> like, it'll, it'll go... Yeah, there's nothing coming. Yeah. That's it. The Easy Allies would like to thank our Patreon podcast producers. We apologize in advance for all the ally names we are about to misspell and mispronounce. Caleb Togi Crawford, Dougie B, L. Thanis, Greg the Dark Knight Kettering, Stephen Thomason, Nick, Walker Hope, Will Schmuck, Sigma, Robert Stoffel, Zachary Wingate, Dave Red, Paulo Costabel, Discarded Digit, 
Alley Cat, Happy Gaming, Miguel Rivas, Valmar, Daniel Portillo, Jose Gutierrez, Alex AI, Rob Bob Will, Beaten Down Brian, Chum Nguyen, Roy Sung, Yasser Kurbushi, Bradley Speeds, Nicholas Johnson, Sarah Lawson, Douglas Chomich, Jay Shi, Alexandra Rees, Jesse Blue, Black Lives Matter, Hayden Hargraves, G. Levin, Matthew Pauling, G. Ken, Gary James, The Banana Forklift Killer, Marcel Markov, Catherine Lai, Todd Yurkovic, Candy Coated Thorns, Hitman 47, Rack, Matthew Holcomb, Oni Black Mage, Jordan Kirk, James Vitt, Sam Hendrick, Robert Crouch, Luke Bennett, John Burns, Mango, Mark J. Betters II, Adam Henry, Brad Grenz, Jan Tyson, Daniel Dupree, DRD 7 of 14, Sabine T, Charles Anthony Iapacino, Samsa Stormbaum, Sage Mode Q, Stepan Hakobian, Ryan Anderson, Dale Sun, Kroldemort, Spiral in Your Eyes, Christopher Santis, Strikeout NZ, David Boyarski, Pete Shoemaker, Reed Johnson, Manuel Thomas, Michelle Nub, Mikey Mizek Novak, Alex Monaco, Marco Hernandez, Daniel Wong, V. Kira Ray, Don Turner, Sebastian Urban, Eddie Reisner, Sebastian Trier, Azazel Valkyrie, Junya Motomura, Tuttle, Joshua Vanswall, Tense George, Colin Hoyleman, Barry, Cyberboa, Forrest, Eric Maynard, Chase Caldwell, I Sun Chor, Leon Keyes, Chris the Pianist, Ian Anderson, Philip Higdon, Nycrypt, Jai Aldiar, Robert I, C.S. Lewis, Ahmed Al Rashed, Bonnie and Jason Connor, Travis Miosi, Mike Calvi, Alex Glass, The Fatty Show, Dan Pan 16, Wouter De Hayes, Malcolm Mochette, Not Jack, Mithers Strongbeard, Jana, Anthony Galvin, V8 Dave, Oru Kichino, Dakota Hayes, The Classiest Hobo, Mizuki 211, Matt Karwaski, Liam Ahern, Bunny Chen, Materia Addict, From the Void, Culinary Stud, Edison S. Prada Jr., Tim Mann, Crediar, Jesse Fish, Gabriel Aberg, Zahid Hosseini Korami, Lee Young, Alexander Zirianov, Morpheus, Christian Hundorf, Brian Foster, Sean Cornett, Linson Wu, Matthew Migler, Brandon White, Christoph Fatui, Michael Clendenan, Aurelien Grenier, Eric Gustafson, Trevor Thomas, Michael Kozachenko, Adam Lindsay, Corey Landega, Pablo Rodriguez, Ibrahim Sozer, Carl Williams, Gustav Strombaum, Volker Bach, Russell Bateman, Lindsay Wells, Jason I, Nefertiti Jenkins, Jesse Vitelli, Jonathan and Amy Alconis, Quinn Riley, JC3, Paul Nolson, Isaac Swanson, Jameson Lapine, Max His Shame Terman, Bread Roll Art, Joey Din, Splontot, Jordan Phillips, Ryan Wagner, Matthias Clare, Spencer Stevens, Trizak, Matt Ferguson, Sam Sorensen, Vincent Foliat, Paul Sway, Michael Pliskin, Andy Marks, Tim Strothman, XWF Outlaw, Julius Garcia, Alex Lavanier, Ritz 1906, Joel Short, Dimitri Zetas, Mazrim Tame, Helen Y, Travis Gakowski, Megadet, Sneaky Gato, W Crusher, Line Crown 19, Tom Masterman, ZK, Jose Carlos Madrigal, Mr. Anarchy, Thomas Blaze Fauchereau, Andreas Risberg, Dreams of Caffeine, Michael Bisegli, Matthew Holmes, Raymond Lee, Lars Berger, Marcel Giru 17 Froelich, Megan McDonough, Glenn Olson, Corey Jackson, Natavia Ross, Allison Burt, Jesse Wilkison, Katie Garza, Jeffrey Ruchtenwald, Dan Sebring, Neil Bruce, Silent Consonant, Craig Happ, Travis Ng, Cody Westley, Jeremy Ferris, Clay Roberts, Super 3D Cow, Ahab, Accounts Payable, Tristan Howard, John Gallagher, Willow Pingree, Mikhail Aniel, Blue, A Filthy Lot, Mike Hook One, Miguel, Delisi, Ethereal Ether, Roy Eschke, Fishflop, David Wilson, Maverick Lee Back, David Wen, Tim O'Keefe, Harrison Holt McHale, Shut Up Victor, Blake Bonsack, Toasty Soul, Jethrin, Hadi Ali, Espen Gotchman, Chief Uhu, 
Brittany Fuller, Matthew T. Ryan, Luis Ibarra, Malianware, T. Beeks 15, Ulf himself, Bjornar Haraldsvik, Faraz Rizvi, Andrew Stoke, Michael Rebelato, Blue Water Blue Sky, RF Switch, S Snake 24, James Davey, Molly Bittner, Jojo Denko, Jake Musser, Damnable Nook, Eric Tobias, Noah Weinstein, TJ Sullivan.